February 26th. Before we get started, we're going to have a council member on the line who wants to ask a question. Uh, 
Yeah, but you know what, over on 17th Avenue, that's still going to be uh, one of the main service buildings. Well, it's just changed. Okay. Yeah. And so really the only significant change that you might see is some of our vested people in the community might see. And that's been going on now for what, about a year or less. Our old fire prevention division, which was all community work for decades, now our FDA is all cost plus service, which is 16 and 24 plus all gas. So it's down to three people. That's great. And then your plans to um, help us with uh, beach activities in, t in terms of, uh, you know, a boom guard for trade? Yeah, so we, uh, we're just starting more now. We're starting to ramp up for the junior lifeguard instructor training. Um, that will be starting here in another month or so. Um, and then uh, Jamie and I have a training as far as a couple of years down the road, or about a year and a half from now, maybe even less. Uh, we'll be looking at, uh, you know, maybe uh, providing some more support for that. And I assume you're working uh, hand in hand with Mickey. Uh, absolutely, yes. I did not mean to not speak for all of them. No, I didn't think you would, but uh, you seem a bit clever. You seem good, Jeff, so glad you're working with Jeff. <laughs> yeah, they've become collector's items. We don't have any new ones yet. And I just turned off my video because we're starting to see COVID oh, yeah. on our Wi-Fi. So, um, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of patches coming off of uh, shirts that are still serviceable as well as patches that, uh, you know, that are coming off shirts that aren't serviceable. So I think the collector's item is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to have a few myself. So if you're open to collecting or you want to take a picture, we'd love to have some on hand. this opportunity to pitch our town hall um, meeting together, Chief, on March 16th. Chief Walbridge and myself will be hosting a town hall for the for um, folks at 6 p.m. So if you want to ask more questions or if you'd like to attend, please do so. The information will be on our website. Um, Chief Walbridge, thanks again for your time. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, we're now moving on to item three, a report out on closed sessions. Uh, Samantha? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Brooks. The council held closed session on the two items on the agenda and direction was given to staff. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to item four, additional materials. Do we have any additional materials submitted to the city after the packet was distributed? Yes, there were two additional materials. One was received regarding item 9A, uh, the review of the memorial program, and the second was regarding item 9B, the budget principle and goals item. Great, right. thank you. Okay, now we're gonna move on to item five, additions and deletions to the agenda. City. Yeah, changes this evening. Okay, fantastic. We'll go ahead and move on to then um, item six for public comments. This is for items not on tonight's agenda. I'll turn this over to staff to moderate if we have any questions from the public or comments. Mayor Brooks, I do not see anybody on the Zoom uh, me meeting with their hand raised to talk, and I do not see any emails on public comment. Okay, I'm going to um, turn this over to Chloe real quick to go ahead and make a comment of us going back live. Chloe, do you want to make that announcement? Yes, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Or Jamie? Oh, here we are. Sure, I believe we went live for CCTV where we're not um, on. Do you want to just make that announcement? Oh, um, yes, I don't know. Uh, Larry, I know that our technician was on his way. I'm not sure that we have been officially broadcast at this time, but the meeting is being recorded. The point I got was that we were back online. Okay, wonderful. So I've, I'm alone here in chambers unaware. So we are live <laughs> and on, um, yes, the charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8. We are being recorded and will be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. 
and on Saturday following that first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. And like mentioned earlier, the meeting is being recorded and will be available starting tomorrow on our website as well. Thank you. Sorry for the confusion. No, I apologize for just getting just going with it. Sorry. You did great. Thank you for jumping in on that one. All right, we're going to move to item seven. This is for city council and staff comments. I'm going to go ahead and start with staff. Does staff have any comments at this time? The only comment I would just like to make is, is that the, as a county, we've moved um, into the 1B vaccination tiers, which inclu includes a number of um, different occupations, including food occupations, as well as um, occupations associated with oh, child care and teachers. So if you work in one of those professions and you'd like to get a vaccine, if you want to get information about how to do so, we have a link on our website, which will take you to a clearinghouse that the county maintains to get you information. I do know vaccine supplies are extremely limited at this point, so um, it does take some persistence, but I've heard from a number of people who have gotten vaccines. So uh, if you're interested in doing it, I would encourage everybody to, to give it their best. <laughs> well said. Uh, do we have any city council comments? Vice Mayor Story. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to report back from my very first meeting of the Monterey Bay Air Resources District. Um, I was pleased to be nominated um, based on um, uh, Mayor Brooks's suggestion by the uh, City of Santa Cruz mayors that I represent the City of Santa Cruz on the Air Resources Board. Um, and um, I just want to report, I went to my first meeting on uh, February the 17th. Um, and uh, for many of you that may not be aware of the Air Resources Board, it's a tri-county body that uh, manages the particular and uh, uh, ozone in the air in the Bay Area. Um, and um, so if you ever have any issues with that, uh, be sure to look up the Monterey Bay Air Resources District. Um, and, and that, at this particular meeting, um, uh, we didn't, um, um, the only issues that we discussed were relevant to uh, Monterey County. Um, and other than we did get a report on our air quality. And um, as we all are aware, our air quality is excellent um, and far exceeds state standards. And so thank you. Uh, and that's my report. Thank you, Vice Mayor Story. You got me on that one. Um, I see Council Member Peterson, Henry. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Uh, much like uh, Vice Mayor Story, I just wanted to give a quick report on one of the committees that I participate participate in on behalf of the council. Uh, um, a couple meetings ago, I was appointed as the council's representative to the uh, Criminal Justice Council of Santa Cruz County. Uh, we had our first meeting, or at least the first meeting I was part of. Uh, recently, a uh, great group of people. Uh, our Chief McManus is part of that as well. Uh, and at that meeting, I uh, volunteered to participate in a new subcommittee of the group that's going to be looking at uh, policy, criminal justice policy throughout Santa Cruz County. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, and Chief, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you are also on that committee, um, as well as uh, former Santa Cruz Mayor Justin Cummings, and um, community activist and advocate uh, Joy Flynn, who I've also worked with on hosting um, some independent community meetings around racial justice and equity. So it's going to be a really good group. Um, Supervisor Friend is on it as well. It's going to be a really great group of people. I'm lo looking forward to working with everyone and continuing to work uh, with Chief McManus on this particular group. And I'd, I'd be happy to um, pass it over to Chief McManus if he has any comments on that as well. Yeah, thank you, um, Council Member Peterson, and I appreciate you mentioning the work that has gone on and is going to continue with that Criminal Justice Council. And you are correct, uh, myself, representing law, and the Under Sheriff Mitch Medina are the members from the regular CJC who have been uh, volunteered uh, and looking forward to participating on the subgroup that you mentioned in your piece. So thank you for the uh, recognition, and thank you for mentioning that, Council Member. I see Council Member Bertrand Henry. Yeah, um, I'm going to have a little problem with one comment. Um, I have two comments to make, and uh, Mayor, you could 
advise me as how to proceed on the second comment. I'm on the sanitation board, and we recently received our annual report on activities. And I asked Matt Machado, who's the engineer in charge of that particular division, as he is for the whole county, to come up with a presentation for our board, if appropriate. So he's going to contact you, Jamie, and see if something can be worked out. He's very anxious to do a presentation, which shouldn't take long, but that's up to you in scheduling. So the other thing I want to comment on is last meeting in the comments from city council, I made about three different comments. One was capture, two weren't. And the one that I thought was very important was the fact that our budget has relaxed a little bit, and I wanted to have the board address funding for nonprofits. So that's what I made at that point. And, you know, that was received well, so I'd like that captured in the meeting minutes. And so I don't know if I should talk about it now, but what I would like to do is, as I said then, have that be brought back to city council. I'm not too sure that I'm for the old committee arrangement that we used to have. If that continues, I'd like to be a member of that as well. But I'd like this whole thing brought back to city council so we could decide how to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Bertrand. What I would suggest is maybe mention that again on item a little bit later on the agenda. You might have an opportunity to do so. So we will... What do you suggest? Yeah, so you might get an opportunity to talk about that again on item 9B when we go over our principles. Bring that up at 9 instead of... Okay, so don't bring it up correcting city minutes. And now we'll go... If there's no other council comments, we'll move on to item 8 for consent calendar. And this is all items listed on the consent calendar will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. There will be no separate discussion on these items prior to the time the council votes on the action unless members of the city council request specific items to be discussed for separate review. I'm going to take liberty to suggest that if there is a council member that makes this motion to include Council Member Bertrand's amendment if possible. Samantha, if that's okay? Okay, great. So if we can have a motion to include Council Member Bertrand's edits to the item 8A for the minutes. Do I have a motion? Thank you, Mayor. I'll make that motion to include the edits as detailed by the Mayor. And so is the motion to adopt the consent calendar with the alteration to the minutes as indicated for item 8A? Yes. Yeah. I'm just concurring with the Mayor and so I'm making that motion. I'll second. Great. Thanks, Vice Mayor Story. Okay, so that item 8 consent calendar passes with the edits to the minutes. We'll move on to item 9 for general government. 9A, review the memorial program and the recommended action tonight is to provide direction. Mayor Brooks, I'm sorry to interrupt. Did we take a vote on the consent? Oh my gosh, I just skipped all over you guys. I was too excited about nailing that first one down. Okay, so let's bring it up to roll call for item 8 consent calendar. Chloe? Absolutely. Council Member Kaiser? Aye. Council Member Bertrand? Aye. Council Member Peterson? Aye. Vice Mayor Story? Aye. And Mayor Brooks? Aye. Thank you so much. This is such a team effort. I appreciate your support. Okay, so now we'll move on to item 9A and I'll turn this to staff. Good evening, Mayor Brooks, Council Members. I'm going to talk about our memorial program. I'm going to share the screen. Hopefully this will go quickly. And see my screen okay? The memorial program? Do you see this memorial program screen? I want to make sure. Okay, great. Thank you. So we're here to talk about the memorial program. The reason we're mainly talking about this is, and we'll talk about later, is we're almost out of approved location spaces. But I want to kind of give a history of where this memorial program came from. It began back in the 1990s primarily to 
defray and help pay for the purchase of uh, benches in the city. You see benches are installed in the Esplanade, the Village, the Wharf, park, parks, including things like the, uh, the kind of the Prospect Park, you know, as well as Jade Street and places like that. Um, at the time, we have a, a quite a big file. Each um, bench request came to the city council for approval. Um, in 2002, the city approved kind of a more comprehensive memorial program. Um, the truth was at that time, we were getting close to the end of benches, so they added things. But the way they did it, the, the council approved the policy, is council approved location, general locations for benches, say the war plaques on the depot hill, and the number of spaces. Staff then processed those requests for the approved locations kind of on a first come, first serve basis. No more it, individual requests were not coming to the council at that point. Um, when the program was added, it kind of broadened out to include um, memorial plaques, not just benches. So again, the original purpose was to pay for the benches. It became so popular, I. I Honestly, I wasn't here at the time, but I can imagine it was it was an option to, to offer more possibilities for memorials in the city. Um, primarily, as far as numbers along the wharf, if you've been out the last time you looked at the wharf, along the, the railing there, as well as the railing along Grand Avenue on Depot Hill. Currently, the memorial program, if you include all the plaques and benches, lights, um, we, do, we do have some lampposts in the village, um, plaques, we have almost 500 memorial spaces out mm -hmm. there. Um, about half of those are benches. I think a little over two, 230 are benches. <laughs> right now, as we, as I mentioned initially, the reason we're here is the approved memorial locations are basically almost full. <laughs> All Ocean View locations, which I'll get to, have been taken. Um, that is almost exclusively what people call about, is Ocean, you know, they talk so about they start with Things like, I want to bench in the village. Well, at this point, we don't have any. They go to the wharf. So the last couple of years, we've been kind of directing people to the, the railing on Depot Hill, and that's filled up too. Right now, there are some available spaces. We have some benches in the parks, primarily in Jade Street Park. We have about five, I think, I have to get, and we have a couple up at the, the McGregor multi-use park. Um, but that's about it. Um, a few years ago, we actually had to re we had a few benches that were destroyed during an El Nino event. Remember when it rained? Um, you know, they they were destroyed. A couple people didn't want to replace them. They, they you know they no longer were coming to the Capitol and decided to do it. So the council approved a lottery procedure for that because I, I, unfortunately, if, if if we were well fortunately or unfortunately, if we were have approved all the bench requests for the village over the last few years, we probably have about another oh, 75 to 100 benches in the village. So there's a big demand. That's There's a lot of people that want benches down there. Um, as I mentioned, primarily, once in a while we'll get a, we'll get a request for a park if someone had a very strong tie to it, but 90% of the requests are for a location with an ocean view. And that's why the last area that we filled up was the railing on Depot Hill because that was kind of the, the, the last place we had that people could go out, see, the, see remember their loved ones, and, and see the ocean as well. So one of the things we've looked at is potential areas for expansion. Um, staff has identified really three potential areas that would, would allow the program to kind of grow for a few years. Um, it clearly is not the same numbers. Not, we're not getting 500, but um, we have some potential locations. Um, there is a railing that overlooks Capitola Village and the ocean along uh, Cliff Avenue in Depot Hill. So that is a newer railing that, that came into, that was built after the Grand Avenue railing, bless you. Um, and so um, that this is a potential location. Um, that, that is probably in the multiple dozens of potential spaces, maybe 25 or 30. Generally, what we've allowed is a person kind of gets the, the space in between the, the posts, so usually eight to 12 feet. We do allow that person, if they have a, a, if they want to put another one for a family member, they can have two, but that's where we limit it because, you know, it, it becomes too much. So generally, 
each person gets access to the, the railing in between the posts. So that's where we kind of get our numbers from. Another location is the wooden railing on Cliff Drive, not Cliff Avenue, Cliff Drive. Uh, and so you see this is kind of the start of that area um, as it overlooks the wharf. Again, great ocean view location. As we'll talk about later, there's potentially some issues there as well, but there, we, I think I figured that was in the neighborhood of 50 potential spaces there. The other, the other location we kind of addressed right off the bat is we do have this, which is a result of um, some, some work we had to do. This is a, another potential location. It's, it's clearly next to the ocean. Um, it does have the ability to, 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 we can put, you know, the same sort of plaques in there as well. Um, it was just kind of the third option we had. Um, you know, truthfully, it's, it's, a, it's a more trouble, tr it's a more difficult location for sure. Um, as we mentioned, the, the, the primary reason for choosing those locations, they, they are next to the ocean. And that's clearly the, where the demand is. They all have kind of potential lo concerns. The, the Cliff Avenue, not Cliff Drive, location in Depot Hill, could possibly increase traffic as, you know, foot traffic as well as, uh, you know, car traffic along that area, which is primarily residential. Um, currently, there are some benches there already, for sure, so people use it. But if you were to add, uh, you know, the, the number 25 or 30, I forgot the exact number, um, of plaques, it could increase that um, number of people. Cliff Drive, you know, the location, the, the amount of space available as you go further up Cliff Drive becomes a little more difficult because it's right up against the bike lane, which is right against the, the road. Not exactly as um, peaceful of a location to come, come see a memorial as, you know, uh, Depot Hill or even, even the wharf. Um, but, you know, they, it could be a subset up there that would be able to accommodate um, some that wouldn't be quite as busy. Um, the Esplanade Park location may not be permanent. You know, it, it was it was put there because of um, falling, you know, cliff issues, and we all know that those don't necessarily stop. So it may be something that we have to adjust and possibly remove in the future. Um, so, you know, it's it's not something we can control. So that that was one of the concerns there. One of the other places we do get quite a few requests, you know, for benches is the the Prospect Bluff Park which is on the other side of the railroad tracks, kind of overlooking the ocean. Um, and I just want to mention that one of the, that is actually not city property. Um, it is leased, and we were, were given right to access it. And as part of the original agreement, there were no more benches added. So if anything were to be added up there, we'd have to change our, our right to enter agreement with um, the person who's, who actually leases it, I believe, at this point from the RTC. Um, but, you know, it's a very popular location as well. Um, so one of the other issues is that, you know, the the amount of kind of real estate that the city has for these plaques would increase. So it, it may change the, you know, as they kind of go up either Cliff Drive or Cliff Ave, it's just more and it's whether or not the, the council wants to go in that direction. Um, one of the other options we, we, we looked at is, is, of course, a multiple memorial option. And... One of the kind of the nearest places we had something similar to this was in Seacliff uh, at the end of the, the kind of past the campground before went into private area. Um, there was a wall, as this is kind of an older picture. Um, the other option is possibly memorial pavers or bricks. Just so you know, the chamber still has a brick program in, in the village. So there is, even if we didn't have that, there is an option there. Um, the memorial wall option is Seacliff wall is, is actually no longer there as far as I know. I haven't been down there in a few years, but it was a controversial thing. Um, but that would be another potential option to maybe not cover as much of, of city area with memorials, but kind of more of a concentrated location, if that's the council's direction. Um, one of the things we, we haven't, we honestly have not identified a, a ideal location for this. As we look at a lot of things down here, there's very there's very limited free space, especially with near the ocean. You know, everything is pretty well used. So that would take a little while to figure out where the best location and, you know, not by putting something up like that, not kind of impact other uses for that area. Um, 
you know, one of the, the other things is depending on how it is, we may have to have someone outside city staff. Right now, all the city, the plaques are installed by the public works department. Um, they can they can do the plaques on the wood. That's not a problem. But if we kind of change things, we're putting, you know, engraving or anything else into, you know, uh, a, a wall or something like that, it may, we may have to have someone do that. Um, one, one nice thing is that it could be done in kind of groups. We could, you know, I know for a fact that's what the chamber does is they wait till they have X number before they go out and, and do it all at once. So it may not be as heavy of an impact as they are right now. Um, you know, we get, we've gotten a lot, actually, I mean, honestly, we've gotten a lot more interest in this since, since COVID started. I mean, I think people are spending more time down there and seeing them. So, um, you know, over the last year, it, it, the requests definitely have gone up. So that is an impact, um, especially on our public works department. Um, so right now, um, what staff is looking for is kind of direction of how to proceed with the program. One option is to continue with the program until all the current spaces are filled and then either close it or come back to the council for more uh, for further direction. Um, we could look into kind of more detailed locations for expansion of the memorial plaque program in a similar fashion, you know, plaques on, we find more bench locations, which is a little difficult because, again, there's not a lot of extra room for those. Um, find other locations as we presented um, for plaque locations, you know, on railings, that sort of thing, or investigate options for kind of a multiple memorial installation. And so, as I mentioned, we're just, kind of looking for direction to move forward. So if it wants to continue, um, you know, if there's a preferred option for how to expand the program, we'll, we'll come back with that option for you. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. I'm here for any questions. Thank you, Larry. Um, do we have any questions from council? Council member Peterson. Yeah, is there a difference in the price of these memorial uh, sites based on if they're a tree or a bench or if they're ocean view or not? Yeah, the, the prices are different between a plaque and a bench. Those are two the two different. We don't we don't we don't change the the price of the bench if it's at a park or is that Esplanade because the cost for maintaining and everything's the same for the city regardless of location. Okay, and I think you answered a question I had about the bricks in the village. So that's technically a chamber uh, project, correct? Yes. So we couldn't, or, or do we list those as a memorial option in our, would it, could we? Even if it said, hey, this is a memorial option, but it's not through the city, it's through the chamber? You know, we, we actually used to do that we, with our memorial. We said, hey, if, you're in, if you are interested in memorial brick, or they call it a brick program, contact the chamber. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they they had, we had kind of put that on hold as the change room was kind of you know dealing with the the COVID issues. I believe they are ready to kind of start back up with that. Um, so yes, that is definitely something we will even well, regardless, we'll be if someone's interested in there, we'll 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 head them that direction. Great. And then my final question is um, these three options of where we could potentially add new memorial plaques. Do we need to choose one? Or can we say, yeah, let's do all of these? I, you can do. You can give the direction however you'd like. These were just the three, and there may be more. Like I said, we, you know, I, I want. We wanted to get kind of what the the council's overall direction was before we kind of dug into each each location. Um, these these were kind of the three based on what we do now, as well as as I mentioned over and over again, the desire to have an ocean view while doing this. Okay, and then, okay, uh, my final question is the um, the ceramic tiles along the seawall in the village that people painted, I, I'm not sure if that was a chamber project or an art and cultural commission project or what that was, but is there any talk of, of doing something like that and adding it to our memorial program and finding a place where people could actually create their own ceramic tile in a, in a memorial or wall or has, has that been discussed at all because I know we have a couple different places in the city where we have those kind of uh, painted tile art exhibits that program was was kind of in coordination with both the chamber as well as the art and cultural and and honestly we hadn't looked at that as an option as of yet okay cool those are all my questions thank you 
Vice Mayor Story? Yeah, thank you. Um, Larry, um, when we issue a plaque um, or even a bench, is it in perpetuity? The language is as long as it is functional. So if, especially at the, right. this is this is really more of a bench issue. When the bench no longer becomes useful, we give the, 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 the I would say owner, but whoever has the plaque, kind of the first right of refusal. And that's what we, that's how we ran into the, the lottery issue without the lot, we created the lottery because we had a couple benches destroyed. I think there were five benches, three ended up wanting new benches and two did not. Um, and so we, we offered it to them. They said they didn't want it. And that's where the, the council agreed on this lottery process um, for that. So it's, you know, we, we don't, we don't give a 10 year or anything like that because truthfully, some of these benches are, are, are they're 25 years old at this point. We're not going to just replace them to replace them at this point. So. Right. Yeah. Um, but the plaques are, they're, they're issued in perpetuity um, short of destruction. Well, yeah. Or if they don't want them anymore, like I said, if, if the bench, if the bench is no longer, yeah, the, the pl right. The, the plaques themselves, as soon as if they disappear, you know, which we've had a few, um, we give the, the folks an option to, to replace it. If they don't replace it, then it would, it would fall under the same sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and my other question, I didn't notice on Grand Avenue, uh, our, um, policy says that the plaques are to be at least eight feet apart. Is there a particular reason why eight feet was selected? Is there? I think that's um, the, that's the standard width between the posts. To be honest, we have a couple locations where that hasn't necessarily followed because we're trying to give, offer people these things. Um, and there are some locations on Grand Avenue that we're not putting available because of they're completely obscured by bushes and things and or you know physical impairments but I think eight feet is the standard um, width of those railings it's not a hundred percent but so we've since I've been doing this and I've heard is we basically say the the the, 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 the people who get the plaques get the spaces between the two the two posts I see okay but it would be feasible to you know, maybe have shorter distances between the plaques that gives us more room. Um, yeah, it would it would take some work because the the existing ones would have to be kind of removed, and because they're all most of them are put in the center of whatever that is. So if it's eight feet, then you know you you don't want them kind of off to the side. But it is definitely possible. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I, I did want to. I did want to chime in on, on something the council member story said about sort of the, the length of time. That is one of those are that is a pretty central concern that I would have about the cliff drive and the Esplanade Park location. That you know the split rail fence um, at Cliff Drive it, is not it's not sort of the same as, as building something on the wharf necessarily or the Cliff Depot Hill, the Cliff Avenue um, location. And in addition, the Esplanade Park fence wasn't really intended to be the permanent end-all, be-all solution. It could be there for quite a while, but it is a challenge when people get these brass plaques where the, the brass itself lasts virtually forever. Um, it's really a question of the, 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 the medium in which it is mounted, how long that is around. And so it's just something to think about because obviously the more these things churn, if the, the physical space where they're installed um, needs to be taken out, uh, it can be a lot of work then to go track down these folks and find out whether or not they want to pay to have them remounted or not. Um, there's just a lot to it. Manager, any other questions? Okay. Um, so I do have one question, and this is for staff or maybe our liaison for Arts and Cultural Commission, Vice Mayor Story. Um, has I, what I'm hearing is there's actually lots of different options and lots of different areas of opportunity here to continue this program. Um, has this been vetted through the Arts and Cultural Commission? Was this something that goes through them or has gone through them in the past to, to decide where and how? Because it seems to me that there's this kind of artistic take on it. Um, has, 
was this in the past something that the, the commission decided on or supported in in the past? You know, when the Cal project happened down on the Esplanade Seawall, the Arts Commission was involved in that because it was a very pub that was public art project, and we did that in conjunction with the chamber. Um, and um, but you know, the just the strict the place through this memorial program. No, we don't get involved in that. Um, and if, but if a if the council was interested in a similar tile project, um, yeah, it's something that I think the Arts Commission could and should be involved with because you know we are talking about public art, and sometimes you have to bring in a lot of of people to. Make sure that you get the right, um, um, uh, you know, outcome. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions before we move on to public questions or comments? Okay. Seeing none, do we have any comments or questions from the public? Mayor Brooks, I do not see anyone with their hand raised. And let me check on the email. Sorry. And I do not see any emails on this issue. Okay, so we'll bring this back for um, council comment, and it just looks like you're looking for some direction. Do we have any direction from council at this time on this item? Uh, council member Kaiser? Yeah, so I am super interested to see if, if we do need to go through the Cultural Commission, um, Arts and Culture, um, and then again, working with our city people, what is going to be most feasible if all of the options are options? Like that to me seems pretty, pretty cool and could open up more opportunity. Um, my big thing was the prospect of kind of area, but learning from Larry that that is not our property. So that makes total sense. Um, I don't know if there's any leeway there as well, because that is such a good view. Um, and a, Space where a lot of people hang out. I don't know if we can um, rally with them at all, but um, I think that this program is pretty cool, and I want to be able to maintain it to the best of our ability as as far as um, working as a city and working with the public too. Thank you, Council Member Council Member Peterson. I like the idea of. Um, the wooden railing up on Cliff Avenue, up on Depot Hill, um, and and as Councilmember Kaiser mentioned, the um, learning that up on Prospect Avenue isn't really our property would take a little bit more work. But I like the idea of the wooden railing on Cliff Avenue. I'm wondering if we could open the space on the upper Esplanade wall, but maybe add some kind of clause or something for people that choose the plaque in that space, letting them know that this is, you know, um, a little bit more subject to the elements based on the fact that there's been some um, erosion on that cliff and that it's less, I, I don't know, just, just some kind of a warning um, so that people know what they're getting into when they when they choose that space. But I do think it's a beautiful space that could also be used for these kinds of memorials. So I would personally recommend that we move forward with those two. And then in addition to that, um, and, and forgive me, I might need staff to step in. I don't remember exactly what we decided that the uh, protocol was for sending something to a committee, but maybe we could ask the Arts and Cultural Committee if they would be interested in um, reviewing sites in town for another potential tile project that would allow people to create their own memorial tiles, um, much like the one in the village and the one on uh, the corner of Monterey and, and Park. Uh, that has all the, the kind of recreation activity uh, painted tiles. So the tile one is kind of a future project that maybe a committee would like to look into, but of course we can't force them to. Um, otherwise, I would make uh, a motion that we move forward in opening memorial plaques on Cliff Avenue, on Depot Hill, and at the upper Esplanade wall um, with an additional clause for the upper Esplanade wall, letting people know that, that there is a, a danger of um, environmental erosion or something of that nature. I'll second the motion. Okay, and Vice Mayor Story, your hand is raised. Yeah, um, 
Well, one, I want to, I, I think, reaffirm my support for this memorial program overall. Um, I think it's important for us to, um, to kind of be involved with families as they're losing their loved ones and providing a beautiful place for them to have a, a remembrance. Um, I know I see quite a few of them when I go walking around um, the community and, and, and here on Depot Hill. Um, and um, they are frequently, you know, the uh, plaques of the area around them are decorated with flowers or other things um, in remembrance of, of uh, people's loved ones. So um, I just want to reaffirm, I think, the importance of maintaining the program. Um, I second in the motion because I think that we should look at expanded spaces. And the, and the three that the staff has recommended, um, I think that uh, we should include those. Um, I agree with Councilwoman uh, Peterson that we should include the uh, wall on Esplanade Park. I know it may be temporary, but all of these fences are temporary to some degree or another. Um, and if at any, any point where it's torn down or something else is going to be built there, and maybe the plaques could uh, transition to whatever the uh, new infrastructure is, um, I would also um, think that we could maybe, in our program, um, shorten the minimum distance between plaques from eight feet. Um, I don't know why there's a particular distance, but it may be able to um, give us more uh, room to add plaques. And I think lastly, I want to emphasize, you know, no matter how much, how many spaces we allocate as as time goes on they're gonna we're gonna run out of space um, so I think that at, at some point in the future I think we're going to be forced to either look at um, somehow phasing out and so that allowing new people um, uh, to um, benefit from the program because I imagine over decades um, some of these um, you know families move on um, and the plaques become less significant to them. So I think that is a reality of Capitola and one that maybe future council members are going to have to face. Um, so those are my comments and uh, I appreciate being able to uh, discuss it. Thank you. Council member Bertrand, your hand is raised. Yes, it was. Um, yeah, I support the motion and I was thinking about amending it, but you know, listening to Sam, you know, we probably might reach a steady state of some sort where things come and go in the natural course of things. But I still kind of like uh, what Larry mentioned is trying to find a, a wall, such as the one that was on the beach a little bit south of us, which I saw, which was very impressive. That wall was very special to people. Um, the, the fact that there were so many uh, different plaques there of all sorts of different designs, which was another feature that made that place interesting instead of just a certain type of design. Um, so, you know, I hope we keep that in mind, you know, if we find that there's more need in the future or maybe this reaches a steady state so some people uh, drop off and, and create new space. But finding a permanent place for a wall of some sort Great. Thank you, Council Member. Um, I appreciate the motion on the table. I just would add that I think, just as some comments to it, uh, Rispin Park could be a possible great uh, place for a potential wall as we think about that. And I just heard, um, just for feedback, a lot of, or, or just for comment, that there's a lot of work that has to go into um, into these plaques and having to put them out there on the program is it's time consuming, it's, it's, a, it's a lot for staff to take on. And I'm just curious whether there would be um, any possibility of partnering with the, um, the chamber on this, since they've done this before and have some kind of, uh, if there's any way for them to alleviate the, the project and what it, uh, how it kind of, how much we do it within the city, maybe there's some opportunity there for partnership. So I just would like to add those comments there. Um, okay, so it looks like we have a first and a second. Can I have a roll call? Oh, Councilmember Peterson, is your hand still raised? Yeah, sorry, I have one final comment. 
And this isn't a uh, part of the motion, but just something that I, I think is worth considering and I can uh, bring it up to the BIA um, as an option if it's something that would even make sense. But I know a lot of our restaurants have Oceanside or Creekside dining and there's wooden um, kind of wall um, railings on those restaurants. And I'm wondering if there was a, would be an opportunity for restaurants to opt in to something like this so that families who maybe, you know, went to a certain restaurant every week um, to a certain table or something could say, I would really like to have a memorial plaque um, uh, along the beach at Zelda's or overlooking the creek at Paradise or something along those lines. Um, so I think that's something worth considering as we move forward uh, to allow restaurants to opt into this so that people can also put plaques there should they choose to participate. So I just wanted to throw that out as an option for something that we might want to consider uh, in the future. And that's all. Thank you. Okay. Are we ready for a motion here or a roll call? Any other hands? I'm checking the panelists. I see no hands raised. Okay, can I have a roll call, please? Yes, Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Kaiser. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. All right, folks, moving right along. That item passed unanimously. Thank you, council members. Moving on to item 9B, consider fiscal year 21-22 budget principles and goals. I'll turn this over to staff. I think I needed to unmute before I share my screen. Let's see if I got that done in the right order this time around. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Everyone see me, hear me, and see the screen. I'll take that as a yes. I see a thumbs up. All right. So this is a process we go through every year before we prepare the budget, and it's an opportunity for the city council to talk a bit about their goals for the next fiscal year. Um, you know, we kind of try to break our process into um, – into laying out sort of the high level principles uh, for the city, which generally don't change much year to year about how we approach a budget. And then we dive into more sort of the details, the programs, the projects that the council would like to see done uh, each year. Um, you know, one of the things I always like to stress for people is, is that, you know, the city budget is in some ways like the city's, you know, kind of blueprint for its activities. It really it lays out what we're going to be working on in any given year. And it sort of articulates for the council for staff, for the public, about what we're going to be doing in this next year. Um, I talked a little bit about kind of this difference between sort of like the budget principle, provide the overarching kind of framework for what we're doing and why we're doing it, the goals, um, then identify kind of a little bit lower level, a little bit more specificity, and then the key projects and programs, which would be kind of the line items that you would then tend to see within the budget or within the budget narrative. Um, we've broken our basically high-level principles into three categories in the past, so I'm going to briefly kind of touch on them and see if anybody wants to talk about changing them or if we're good with them in sort of a go-forward basis. We talk about our fiscal principles, our public service principles, and then our public uh, improvement principles. On the fiscal side, we talk about maintaining a balanced budget that has to do with, you know, making sure that the revenue in matches the revenue out each year, but we aren't deficit spending that we're then also using one-time revenues for one-time expenditures and assure that the, the budget that we're planning ahead, looking at what we think the revenues are going to be like in the future, and we're not setting up future city councils for problems by, you know, sort of backing them into a corner with costs. On public service principles, we talk about kind of maintaining and improving upon the transparency and access to the government, um, recognizing the high priority that our community places on public safety and our police department, and then always um, balancing the sort of this long-term service level, looking long-term at service level increases to make sure that our service level increases can be matched with the, the resources and the revenue that we're going to be receiving over the long run. 
And then on the public improvement principles, we talk about maintaining our city's infrastructure to the maximum extent that we can, given limited funding. This is always a real challenge in the pavement management street world. Uh, maintaining and improving our natural resources and sustainable green energy, green programs. And then um, maintenance, focusing on the maintenance. You know, it was obviously a real challenge for us this year with the budget cuts that we had to make around COVID, but really trying to focus on the village and overall maintenance and make sure that we're doing everything we can to make sure the streets, sidewalks, city facilities are uh, taken care of the way we'd all expect. Um, I think I talked a little bit about why identifying the key projects. I think to some degree it really helps staff when we're developing the budget and helps focus the council, um, you know, because things always come up over time, but this gives us an opportunity to take a step back and really try to be strategic about what it is that we want to work on uh, next year. Um, you know, and in some ways I think when, when we look at other things that come up, it, it makes sure that we sort of have these other things in mind that we're able to make sure that we're not, um, you know, shelving maybe the big picture for maybe some smaller picture stuff that comes up during the course of the year. So one of the things that we have typically done is recommended uh, council try to identify five or six kind of key projects or programs um, that we can really focus on and make sure that they're sort of the focus for the fiscal year. Um, in the past, we, we passed what we did. What we did last year actually was we had this meeting, and I think literally the next day, the governor told everybody to shelter in place. Um, and we never really took the next step after kind of going through, getting the feedback from the council at this meeting last year. What we ended up doing was really developing a budget was that was a bare bones budget, just keeping the lights on. So what we're gonna do this year is we're gonna get the feedback from staff, from council, and then be incorporating that, and then uh, you know putting it into the budget for final adoption when we adopt our budget. Um, and what we tended to do in the past and seems to work pretty well is, is each council member can identify projects and programs uh, that they would like to see. Um, Jim is going to be helping us out, maybe taking notes and noting when council members agree with each other or have similar sorts of goals. And then we can look at them as a group. Um, I do want to talk about, so this is, this is what we did last year. Uh, for those of you that remember this meeting, I remember taking these notes. Uh, had a lot of great ideas. Some of the things we still did get done. Um, you know, we did the, the talking about the library, the jetty, the flume. Those were still projects that continued to move forward. Um, we don't have all the permits for the wharf, but we might by the time we adopt our budget. Um, but there, these, these were, this is included in this attachment in your staff report, and this was the outcome out of the meeting last time that was never really moved on uh, for adoption. And then in your staff report, you'll notice that I called out a number of sort of big picture key projects that to think about for next year. Uh, I want to be really clear that I don't actually think we should do all of these. <laughs> I think a lot of them, um, some of them are, are going to be pretty controversial or may involve a lot of, a lot of hearings, a lot of, you know, potential council bandwidth. So I think we want to be strategic about which one of these we actually decide that we would want to tackle, if any. Um, in some cases, I think it's worth noting, I, I want to bring these up, maybe not because they're going to actually happen, it may not be a priority this next year, but in some cases, for example, the City Hall Pacific Cove site one, uh, I would really say that, you know, five years from now, if we haven't focused on it at some point, you know, we will really will be in trouble. It's been a long-term issue that does need attention at some point. I'm not sure that 21-22 is the time to do it. Um, but I will leave that up to council and for you, you guys to deliberate and think about. Um, so the ones that I called out in the staff report, mall redevelopment, this is a really important one. I know for the council, for the community, for staff, for everybody, uh, it, but it is one that's not necessarily totally in our control because at this point it's on hold with the developer. The zoning code has been a focus for the city for a long time. We have good news. Uh, we, we believe we're going to get a hearing in front of the Coastal Commission uh, later this winter. Uh, and we're hoping to be able to maybe wrap this project up um, relatively soon, which would be great. The efforts, uh, Council Member Bertrand talked about this a bit at the beginning of the meeting. You know, I think that we need to refocus our community grant process efforts. We really put that whole on hold a year ago, uh, but reinvigorating that effort. Um, updating the city administrative policies. That was something that Mayor Brooks called out in our workshop. 
Uh, we have a lot of policies that probably do need updates, but that's also going to take up, everyone needs to know, a fair amount of room on agendas, um, as a lot of the items do require, you know, council approval. So that's just something everyone needs to know. If it's going to be a priority, it's going to take up some council bandwidth and staff bandwidth. The long-term plans for City Hall, I mean, I think this is a pretty well-discussed issue. Uh, I assume most of you are all well aware of it. Oops, trying to go back. Um, I'm trying to move the... <laughs> the camera because it's right covering up the item and I couldn't read it. Um, the issue with the City Hall site is really, you know, City Hall is in the floodplain. We experienced the flood in 2011. You know, I've heard people say that if the termites stop holding hands in the City Hall building, the building might just fall down. So, you know, it is, it, it, it's a building with a lot of issues. And I think developing a long-term plan, whether, whether it's, you know, continuing to invest in the site and renovating it, and making it work for the city for another 50 years, or whether it's finding a different site, that's what I mean by trying to find a long-term plan for the site. You know, it's figuring out what makes the most sense. Again, I'm not sure that this now is the time to do this. Um, my inclination probably would be to wait, uh, but I do want to just sort of toss it out there so we can begin to think about it, even if it's for the next year or the year after. Uh, village parking rates. This is something that's come up a couple times. Uh, the parking meters, I think the rates were last changed on them around 10 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, in addition, uh, Council Member Bertrand has brought up and the FAC has been looking a little bit at some of the rates that we charge for some of the exchangeable permits. Um, again, this can be a pretty controversial issue and, you know, we might want to think about some sort of task force or some sort of specific group to work on this, but it could be time, maybe next year as well. Uh, outdoor dining, this is one that we probably are going to have to focus on. The outdoor dining is going to, in theory, come to an end, the program that we have today, uh, as we wrap up the pandemic. Uh, and I suspect that there's going to be a lot of a push for reconsidering our parklet program that we had several years ago, that pilot program, and um, what we want to do. Do we want to make a long-term plan around outdoor dining beyond the pandemic? And I would assume that that's something that we would want to get in front of rather than reacting to it once once we tell people they need to, to get out of the part of the street. Um, this one actually did come up briefly last year, and there wasn't much discussion about it. But but we have been talking to the school district about, you know, New Brighton Middle School and Monterey Park. And is there an opportunity to collaborate um, to improve the recreational amenities if we really think about it as kind of one shared green space between the two entities? Um, it's, it's kind of a, it's a neat project. We need to do some more work if the council would like to, to figure out with the school district what might fit there, uh, and then think about what the relationship would be between the school district and the city, uh, and then ultimately find funding. So it's, it's not a one-year project, but, uh, but it could be a fun one to start working on. And then this last one is, a, is, is really a new idea. Uh, and this has come about because, you know, the city of Scotts Valley has been hit hard as everyone has by the pandemic, and they really don't have a recreation program anymore. And so the city manager for Scotts Valley reached out to me uh, and asked whether or not we might be able to provide some recreational services in, in Scotts Valley. You'll remember that we already have a partnership with the city of Scotts Valley around a shared building official. Uh, so this kind of the concept is to try to look for opportunities to leverage the resources that we each have to do things maybe more efficiently, better, cheaper, faster, that kind of thing. Um, if this was going to be something that we were going to work on, um, they, Scotts Valley has said that they might be interested in something happening this summer, which would require pretty quick movement. Um, and I can more than happy to answer questions about kind of what Nikki has done some work as well to look at what this might look like or how it might work. Um, more than happy to answer questions if council wants more information about what some sort of partnership might look like with uh, Scotts Valley Recreation. And with that, we're really looking for your direction. You know, if council can identify some of the things they would like to see next year, the high level, you know, confirm that the high level budget principles were on the right track. Uh, council members wanted to identify and then maybe try to narrow down to five or six key projects. That would be great. Uh, and with that, I'm available for questions. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, we'll turn to questions. Council Member Peterson. I just have a quick question. In the packet on page 35, 
It says the Coastal Commission zoning code is expected to be certified in spring of 21, but then on 36, it says we're expecting a hearing for late winter. So are we expecting that to be completed in spring or in winter? I think that we were, we think that it's going to go to hearing. Katie, I believe our direct community development director is on, on the call. And I think we have a tentative date for Coastal Commission hearing. Yes, we were um, scheduled for March, but we just re got word that they had to push us back to the April hearing. So I think it's the second week of April. Okay, so the hearing's in April, but we don't expect it to be done until winter. Oh, um, it, the, then we will bring it back. So I would say spring of this year. So the hearing is in April, and then we'll bring it back to the city council to bring forth the modifications that they're requesting. And at that step, the city council has the ability to adopt those changes. And then it would take, it would um, be the new zoning code for all of Capitola. Perfect. Okay. I get it now. Okay. Thank you. And then. Yep. Well, we said uh, winter 21. I'm sorry. We were talking about like coming up here in the next month. <laughs> oh, okay. Not, yeah, oh, we didn't oh, mean that. Still in winter. This, yes. Before we hit spring. Okay. I get it. Sorry. Okay. Um, that makes sense. And then uh, my other question um, in regard to the community grant. So tonight it sounds like it's just tonight to suggest that the, the community grant funding is one of our top priorities, but the actual, I mean, we're, we're getting a budget update in March, right? So that would be the time to actually start looking at how much we would fund and who we would fund and all that. Is that correct? Tonight's just the night to say we want that on our priorities? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I meant to talk about that at the outset. So this is a little bit awkward. We're going to do a mid-year budget report coming up in two weeks with the city council. And so, you know, council member Bertrand, you brought up trying to look at this year's, there's two, there's two issues with community grants that I think we have pending. One is, um, you know, we didn't fund the community grants this year, and we were going to have a conversation about that. I think Councilmember Bertrand and Councilmember Peterson, you both brought that up. That That's the mid-year budget meeting we're having in two weeks. Then this larger conversation of what are we doing about the community grants going forward? We had some work done a couple a year ago. You know, let's pick that ball up and move forward. That That is, um, that's like kind of a fiscal year goal that we would say, yeah, we want to reinvigorate our, our subcommittee to work on this, and let's let's pick that ball up. That makes sense, and it's a little funny to be doing the goals now for next year before we are closing out this year with the, the budget, but it's just the way the sequencing has worked out. Okay, got it. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Bertrand. Uh, question? Oh, and Councilmember, you are uh, muted. I do it all the time. I know I do that too, um, obviously. So um, I think the parklet idea needs to be re revisited in one sense. I believe, um, Mary, maybe you could comment on this. What's the feedback from the from the merchants? I mean, it seems to me that it's been very successful the way it's been done right now. So how much effort should we put into trying to create uh, something new that, you know, would actually meet a need, but is it successful enough to really benefit the merchants? I think you posed a good um, question, Council Member Bertrand. Um, there was some, uh, there was a request that that go to that question go to the BIA kind of as a survey, um, and I don't know when appropriate time would be to discuss that any further. But if you feel that this is a priority during our comments and deliberation, most definitely bring that up. Okay, I, I think the survey is a great idea. Um, as we know, the uh, 1.9 uh, trillion, supposedly, if that's going to be passed, there could be some COVID monies available, and maybe that could help, you know, make our parklets a, a look a little bit nicer, because right now they're sort of haphazard in one sense. The merchants, I can't see them wanting to put a lot of money into something that is temporary. But if it's going to be permanent, that's what I'd like the city to explore, how we could help them you know, fund something that is a little bit more permanent and looks a lot nicer. Thanks. All right, and that's yeah. perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, I do we'll, have we'll, another. We'll, yeah, I just have another question. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so, in terms of the partnership with the school district, I'm glad that that's moving forward. 
Is, is that something that's probable? What, what's the status and, and how much uh, possibility can we actually depend on this moving forward? I don't think we can depend on it moving forward. I know that there's a great deal of interest on the school district's part in trying to make something like this work. The issue is, is that they would like to have a soccer field, a regulation soccer field. And I think the city would certainly be improved by having a regulation soccer field. The question is just how, how it could fit. Uh, and so that, that's the real key question. I think if, if there is a way to make a regulation soccer field and a track and a softball field all work out there at Monterey Park, then I think we can have a very real conversation. But, um, but I don't know the answer to that. I'm not, a, I'm not a park designer. And so that's actually a question that we've talked to the school district about answering is can we fit these three uses? Um, and if, if we can, I think then there's a lot of interest on the school district's part about, you know, working something out. And it really comes down to your council's interest in, you know, working with the district, which I, I detect as being high, and then uh, secondarily just funding. That, that'll be the real challenge because, um, you know, new soccer field projects are, are not cheap. They're not cheap, and soccer is a, an important aspect for kids these days, <laughs> big time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions at this time? I just have a question for um, our city manager about how we're going to move forward in the, the next round of conversation. Um, in the packet on page 38 with all of the items with the X's and such, were those all items that, that we set as council's priorities that we walked away with as our priorities? Because in your request, you said pick five tonight. So I'm curious how we are, we're going to proceed with, with this. So historically, I, I usually ask for council members to narrow it down to five. Uh, and in practice, we end up more like with what that, that attached, um, the attachment to the staff report was, which, okay. which, which is a lot of different things. And then, yeah. you know, the way we concluded that meeting uh, a year ago was council, the council members went through, talked about different things they wanted. We did our best to put check marks as when we heard multiple things from multiple council members. And then yeah. the direction was we were going to come back with sort of a distilled version of that as best we could in the budget hearings. And we okay. really just ended up in a different place. So to the extent yeah. that the council can narrow it, um, it's very helpful, but we will do our best with whatever you're able to give us this evening. Great. Um, then I'll make a suggestion before we move on to, um, to public comment. Um, because we didn't really get to go get very far with the last year's I, uh, list because of COVID, I don't know if we could bring that up as a starting point because some of those things that were even mentioned by council tonight are already on there. And perhaps just take off council member Botsorf and exchange it for council member Kaiser. And we could go down that list. And then if there's anything left off that wasn't addressed from that list, I, I think that'd be a good starting point, especially because council worked so hard, vice mayor Story and council member Bertrand and council member Peterson and myself last year on, on that list that we didn't get far in. Would you so, come to uh, bring that list up for us to start off with? Yeah, so Finance Director uh, Mulberg, Jim was going to be doing our uh, helping us with that this evening. So, Jim, do you have that and the ability to pull that up for us? Excuse me. Yeah, let me um, share my screen, and then uh, we'll have that list up. And, Jim, I'll give you a second to get that as a working doc, and maybe we can move, go to public comment at this time. Yes, uh, yeah. Mayor Brooks, I do not see anybody um, requesting to speak on this item on the Zoom meeting, and I do not see any emails on this item. Great, thank you. Okay, so we'll bring it back to Council, um, and I hope that made sense um, that we'll start with last year's because that's what we worked on, and then if there's anything that anybody would like to add or we could edit along the way. Um, if I could get a, just a consensus, I don't want to go rogue here with some head nods or something, if everyone's comfortable with that. Yeah? Okay. Great. Okay, Jim, want to bring that up? Apologizing. I have tried twice so far. To know. And we did see it both times, just FYI. Oh, okay. It's not showing up on my side. That's weird. Yeah. And Council Member Kaiser, did you have a follow-up question? 
Yeah, sorry. So are we, just to clarify, are we looking at this list and are we each picking uh, the five or six that are most important to us? Or because I feel like there's a few names that just have like a couple X's next to it. So like. I think the way it worked last year is if everyone kind of agreed with it, we all put our names and then the ones that had the most is how it was prioritized um, by staff. So you, if the first 15 you love, you can say you, you agree with them, but maybe not everyone else will, but that's how the checks is, checks box gets next to your name. Okay. And I see- If this is working right now, I had a question. Oh, Council Member Vachon, sorry, I was distracted with Jim. No, no, that's sorry. Um, I just had something to maybe make this work a little bit better. I, I think a lot of the lines have already been addressed or are on their way to being addressed and could be like complete non, number nine, complete uh, library, uh, Jetty Flume. You know, these things are on the way. Yeah. Um, and permit uh, permits for the war, these are on the way. So in a sense, this could be shortened quite a bit. Absolutely. That's what I'm hoping for, and that'll make our city manager list of five more feasible. Jim, if you yeah. want to highlight the ones that we, as we go down, if they're actually in in process, we could just highlight them in a different color, and we don't need to vote on them. All righty. Um, but we, when we get there, you don't have to, okay. unless you're that fast. Okay, uh, Jamie, do you want to go with this, and we'll I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, I think this is a great tool. I think the one thing, Jim, maybe do you think there's any way we could bump up this Zoom? Just hit the plus button there in the lower right once or twice. Awesome. Okay. Great. So, so then the question I think is, is um, Mayor Brooks, do you want to have we could take all the little tick marks off at this point because nobody yeah. voted. Um, and then do you want to just go, how, would you like, would you like to just call on folks and have people go sure. through and identify which ones they'd like to see? And then also recall that there were, I think, that the five or six items that I suggested for consideration that yeah. aren't on right now. Right. If, if someone's click on the draw, poor Jim's on, on the draw there, but he could type in and at the very end as we go with it, those five that you recommended. Okay, so we'll start with, and I'm going to try to expand my page just so I could see everybody um, with, and I'll just do, I'll just call you out, your name out, and if you just agree, just say agree as we move along, and Jim will mark your name. So the first item is develop options for council consideration to address rising CalPERS costs. Council Member Peterson? Agree. Council Member Bertrand? Agree. Councilmember Kaiser? Agree. Councilmember uh, Vice Mayor Story? Is this going to be one of my top five? No. Okay, then I'm okay with it. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> I agree. Okay, next one. Evaluate potential tax me measures to offset impacts of the mall. Vice Mayor Story? No, we sort of did oh, sorry, that, didn't sorry. we? Um, uh, oh, we did that one, didn't we? Yeah. I think we shelved it maybe for, we may want to consider it again. Right, exactly. Year when we get right. back into a general election cycle. Yeah, so Jim, if you want to put 20, was it 24? That's the cycle? 22. Um, 22. What year are we in? 22, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, can, next one, continue working with Capital and Mall ownership groups to redevelop the mall. That's just ongoing, so we can skip that one. Yeah. Work toward Coastal Commission certification of zoning code update. We've done that one. Respond to COVID-19. We've done that one. Complete, Oops. great job, staff. Complete funded, funded CIPs. Um, so we'll go, because we have not done that. So Council Member Peterson? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Council Member Story? Um, fun. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Um, but I, I'd like 
to um, speak to completed or uh, respond to COVID-19. Hmm. Okay. If you come back around to it, it's it's some in other lines too, so I can wait. Okay. Uh, so he agrees to this one, Council Member Bertrand. I agree. And Council Member Kaiser. I have no idea what that is, but you all agree, so I agree. So the CIP so projects are the public mm -hmm. works projects that are in, 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 in process. So the funded CIP projects would be like the road projects that have funding that okay. we're waiting to get the permits and get out the door. Yeah, do it. So before I move on to the next block of, um, of areas, would anyone like to edit or add comments to line items 3 to 10? Vice Mayor Story, you had some, uh, maybe some edits or add-ons to some of these, or? Yeah, I had uh, comments about respond to COVID-19, and there's some, you know, line 16 refers to COVID, and line 26 refers to COVID. Um, but, yeah, I have some comments, um, kind of now that we're uh, hopefully moving away from COVID, about making the transition out. So. Would you like that to add that item as a priority here before we just skip over it? How would be it? Well, if I mean, if it's okay with you, um, um, my thinking uh, now that we have the vaccine, we are, um, I think, moving to going back to having more open community, um, I, and I think this is going to have some budget impact. Um, but we need to, I think, do this in a way. Um, that both protects the public, but then opens us up to being able to having community gatherings, council gatherings. Um, I think that there, there's some things about COVID operations that I'm glad to be leaving behind. And I think there's some technology that we've learned to use that could be uh, continually useful for um, to increase public participation. Um, and I think it's gonna take the city being involved in um, kind of noticing and encouraging people now to move back to normal routines. Um, and I think that those are, um, are gonna have budgetary impacts. And so um, I would like to see some thought put into that and that put on the list. I think that's something we'll naturally come to, so I could support Sam in that. You're muted. Oh, no, I'm not. Rico. No, me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and take that line item, then we'll go across to Council Member Peterson. I agree, I agree with this. I'm just, uh, Council Member Story, if you can clarify, is, how is this a, a budget um, goal? Are we, are we looking to, to put funding towards um, programs that would help us transition? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, I think that there is going to need some budget um, uh, funding necessary. Um, and in the sense of uh, of one uh, noticing and uh, letting the public know that we're moving back to uh, normal operations, encouraging them uh, to be involved with community uh, government uh, as they used to be. Because I, I don't think these things are just going to happen, and this is going to be a transition. We have to be prepared to, as we're encouraging people uh, to engage with us once again, um, but though doing things that where everyone is still safe, uh, because you know the herd immunity or the vaccination is not going to happen overnight, um, and um, and I think there is going to be a transition period, um, and then even when we're moving our you know back to our normal operations, all the council are in the chambers, the public's coming to the chambers. I think there's some of this technology that we've learned to use um, where, you know, be, people being able to access over, over the webinar, over Zoom, 
and that we should continue. I assume that that's going to necessitate some uh, technology expenditures to be able to achieve that. So yeah, and I don't I don't know to what it how I don't think it's a huge budgetary item, but I think some attention and focus and some dollars need to be spent to achieve those goals. And and again, I, I don't think we should just sit back and wait and see how things roll out, but that we should be on the forefront of that um, and, um, um, and be leaders uh, in opening up our community once again and doing it in a safe way, though, and assisting the business as, as well. Um, um, and so, and I think, and those have been, those are budgetary items. Some of those are going to be funded through the CARES Act and so, but that's what I was, that's what I'm thinking, uh, Councilwoman Peach. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I would support that. Uh, if I could add a little bit there. Um, a natural thing is, uh, you know, Chloe is our um, expertise in terms of social engagement. So some of her staff time, you know, is going to have to be paid for. So that's a... Uh, budget item. Thank you. Um, so I agree as well. Uh, Council Member Story, this is your item, so I'm only a, a Vice Mayor. I assume you agree with this. Cal Council Member Bertrand? Oh, no, I already agreed with it. Oh, you did. And Council Member Kaiser? Yes, I agree. Okay, now we're on to line item 13. The next little grouping here. Explore grant opportunities for public safety, CIP, and environmental policies and outreach programs. That's sort of ongoing, so definitely agree. Council Member Peterson. Council Member Peterson? Yeah, I think this is something we should always be doing as a city, so I'm not sure if it needs to be on any one year's budget principles. I, I agree with it in concept for sure, but I feel like as a, as, an, as a city, we should always be considering grant opportunities for these things. So I don't know if it needs, if I would want it to be narrowed down to this particular year and then just include it every year. Um, if, I, if I may add, maybe an edit that we explore grant opportunities uh, uh, such as CDBG, I know that we not ha we have not always done that because it's time consuming, and perhaps if we can add that as a uh, explore uh, grant opportunity for public CIP environmental pro and out and outreach programs such as CDBG, just because I know our city has not always done that. I don't know if we want to get that specific, but that's that's where I would like to add that. Well, we've had a grant person before, so that's that should be something addressed. I agree. I mean, also, I'll support it. I'll, I'll support it. Okay. Um, as do I, Council uh, Vice Mayor Story. Yeah, we should always be doing those things. Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, I indicated earlier. I'm supporting. You're jumping the gun. I, I can't keep up with you. Councilmember Kaiser. <laughs> yes, thanks. All right. Uh, create three-year fiscal plan for mall re redevelopment impacts. It says in-house. Oh, boy. I don't remember. Three-year fiscal. But this was really around a strategy when we knew that the mall, when we were thinking the mall was going to be under construction relatively shortly, and that takes out a huge amount of uh, tax-producing um, uh, real estate. And so the idea was to try to bridge through the downturn when we knew that there was going to be a lot of sales tax that was taken out, but then it was going to be coming back to figure out how we were going to get from here to there. So that's what this was about. Um, we actually have done a fair amount of this work already, uh, but at this point it, it probably would have to be re-updated when, uh, when the time comes. Okay, so something we would circle back on and, pop, and not address for this year. Okay, so line item 15, support creation and expansion of hotels in appropriate locations. I believe this has just been, uh, it will come if it comes. I think that's kind of where we're at. It's an ongoing effort. Would you agree with that, Jamie? I mean, you know, this is the council's goals, so, you know. Okay, because oh, it says support. Okay, so yeah. support creation and expansion of hotels. In appropriate locations. So, Council Member Peterson. 
And this just makes me think about how we've discussed this at the mall and in, and in the village and so forth. I think that's yeah. kind of yeah, if this is just the budget principles for the coming year, I'm not sure that that's something that I find to be incredibly pressing, especially since the idea of the mall redevelopment is something that we're probably not going to see break ground in this coming year. We've asked the, the designers of the mall to come back to us with um, a plan that includes a hotel. Uh, you know, if, if something were to come up in the coming fiscal year that required us to consider it. I certainly wouldn't say no, let's not consider it. But for the sake of, of really prioritizing our budget goals for the coming year, I'm not sure that I would I, I wouldn't support this as one of the pressing issues. Okay, Vice Mayor Story. I agree. No. Oh sorry, and I skipped myself. I agree with council with our council members here. Um Council Member Bertrand? Oh I agree. And Council Member Kaiser. Same. Okay. So cut unnecessary membership. What are, what are our unnecessary membership? I, I can't remember who brought this one up last year, so I can't remember what was considered an unnecessary membership and if we already did it or not. Well, we did it. <laughs> we did? Okay, we then, all, then we're done. <laughs> we cut all of our memberships last year. Um, yeah, I think the only memberships we maintained were the ones that we really needed to, like, as a city, I, I don't remember. I think may have been a councilor or bottom of item. Um, he, I think he wanted to take a look at some of the memberships that we were that we had, and then we ended up pulling them all out when COVID hit. It was actually uh, Mayor Brooks and Councilmember Peterson that had this one last year. Oh, it was me. Yeah. And I don't even remember what it was. I'm not going to support that because I don't remember what it is. <laughs> 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 oh God! Why did you have to call us out, Joe? <laughs> I was willing to blame Ed. <laughs> I know. Thanks, Jamie. I don't know uh, what last year's Kristen was thinking, but this year's Kristen does not agree. <laughs> <laughs> so we um, clearly, we I do not agree either. Vice Mayor Story. I think this should be reviewed. There's a lot of the memberships that we probably would want, and some that we don't want. So it should be re reviewed. And maybe instead of that being a priority, perhaps staff could just bring it back if there's, I know when we look at our budget for next year in May or March, whatever, March. There you um, go. There you go, thanks. Hi, uh, Council Member Kaiser? Not a priority. Would you like this to be one of your priorities? Okay. Um, monitor revenue impacts from COVID-19 quickly. If I may make a suggestion just to move this to item 11 as like a one, because that kind of makes me think of the same things if Vice Mayor's story is okay with that, and if it, everyone else is to agree to line item 11 to consolidate, consolidate that one. Um, okay, review village hotel parking permit. So this is kind of what uh, our city manager was alluding to, but maybe even more extensively in his staff recommendations to look at parking and um, permit. So if we want to, if if we want to just edit that with the language that staff suggested, and Jamie, what was that? So, so, the, so this was something that came up last year, which was looking at the, the village parking permits for the hotel. You know, I, I have had in the back of my mind the fact that we last updated the parking meter rates around 10, 11 years ago. I think it took something like six or seven hearings at the city council and a blue ribbon mayor's commission to do it in probably two years. So I don't know whether or not we want to dive into that parking meter rate discussion. Um, but at some point in the next couple of years, it's probably going to be a warranted discussion. So I think you have a couple choices here. One is, is we could say, hey, look, let's really just focus on the hotel issue or do we want to look holistically at the village parking? And if we're going to look holistically at village parking, we just got to know that it, it's going to be a big bite. So potentially a question to you, city manager, um, in terms of revenue, um, my understanding is that the parking permit thing could increase quite a bit of uh, revenue depending on how we do it. Now, how would that compare to changing the, uh, the meter rates? Well, so, um, the meter rates right now, they're $1.50 an hour, and I think that the village meters generate, I want to say, about 
Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, around $500,000 a year. So if we increase them by about 33%, I think that that's probably $150,000 a year revenue increase. Um, I think the, the hotel permits, depending on, you know, right now we sell those things for like 50 bucks a year and, you know, maybe they're worth a thousand. <laughs> so there's maybe 30 or $40,000 a year. So ballpark, there's more money in the meters conceivably if we were to increase the rate to $2 an hour. I don't know that that's the right thing for a community. Um, I think you'd want to go through some process to, to do some work to, to, to weigh that out. Yeah, the other, see, I brought this up. The, the other thing that is concerned to me is the equity issue. And, you know, depending on the permit, that could be hogging a meter, you know, for a whole weekend or a week or whatever the time is that someone's renting a hotel room, which depletes our revenue from the parking meters. So depending on how we actually handle this program, it could free up a lot of parking meters and that would be to the benefit of the restaurants and other stores in the village. Yeah, thank you. Um, Jamie, t I mean, taking out the word hotel, I mean, if we're talking about meters and and, and not hotel permits, um, if we're going to be revisiting the parklet uh, question, wouldn't that necessitate having some um, foundation or analysis about our parking meters and the rates and so don't, wouldn't those things go in, in tandem? I mean, you know, the parklet conversation previously, you'll recall that we did a fair amount of work to figure out how much each space on average generated and used right. that as a basis for the rental rate. So if we were to change the parking meter rates, obviously, then the parklet rate, if they're still tied, could change as well. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think... I think doing an evaluation of the village parking rates it, it would be a would be a goal. It, it just everyone needs to know that that's it's going to be a tough one, and, and probably we would you know start with kind of a council hearing that briefed you on the different parking permit programs and what they cost in the village, and and then we would build up incrementally from there and figure out where we want to go. Um, well, I'd, I'd like to do that as you know, as part and parcel of revisiting the partlet concept. Because I, I have an anticipation that it's uh, it's going to be much uh, larger than what we were considered before. Right. So, right. Those, two, those two conversations, uh, talking about parklets and parking meter rates in the village, like that, that uh, I probably don't need to tell you, council member story. <laughs> That's a big bite for the next year. You know, that would be a real thing for us to work on. <clears throat> yeah, the blue ribbon and everything that came after that was over a period of three or four years. Yeah, okay. right. But I, I, just, I don't know that we're going to be able to dodge the question about the parklets, as you <laughs> mentioned before, um, and because I think it's already starting to come up. Um, and um, so I just think we're going to be compelled to look at it, and and it seems to me that it it um, would be in conjunction with what our otherwise rates are, because uh, there's going to be economic questions about you know do we charge for the encroachment on the street? How much do we charge? How much will we lose? Is there a way to make that up? Um, with uh, other meter rates, other parking fees. And so I just see that as all one big que economic question. And yeah, I mean, if we could avoid it, yeah, I probably would prefer that, but I don't think we, we're going to be able to do that, honestly, Jamie. So, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Well, the cat's out of the bag. That's the deal. <laughs> we have to deal with it somehow. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, Jim, if you could write it up um, on item 18, review parklets in village in, with um, including the parking permit as Vice Mayor Story suggested. Um, it sounds like that would be, that's the priority of his. Um, and then maybe in parentheses, just note that in May, we have to, that's when the parklet clause ends anyhow. So when we get to that um, after council comments here. I saw Council Member Peterson's hand raised next. 
I think, you know, I think I'm unfortunately in, in, in the opposite side of the spectrum of, of where Vice Mayor Story is looking at this. I think we will have to look at, at village parking program, hotel parking permits, and parklets in the village, but I think we, in this coming year, need to separate them because we're still in a pandemic right now. We're probably not going to be in recovery mode until well after summer. So, you know, even if we make it a priority to review parklets and decide whether or not we want those to be permanent, I think that's one of the things we really need to focus on this year as, as businesses recover and as we determine what the, the next normal is going to look like, so to speak. Um, and then maybe in the following year, when, when things get back to a, a, you know, we're, we're into our next normal, we've decided if parklets are going to stay or not, then we can look at the parking program and the hotel parking permits. So I am of the of the opinion that um, yes, as, as Vice Mayor Story said, we can't avoid looking at any of these issues. But I definitely think we should separate them, make parklets in the village and outdoor dining a priority this year, and then make the parking program and the hotel parking permits a priority next year. And uh, Councilmember Peterson, so as Jim types this up as a separate line item. Would you like the hotel parking permits and the metered parking to be separate or as one? No, I think that's fine to have those as one. I think that okay. the hotel parking permits and the parking meters together are something we should, we should consider in the next fiscal year. Um, but the parklets in the village are something we should consider in this fiscal year on, on their own. Um, because they're all important issues, but in, in viewing everything from a lens of pandemic and coming out of 2020 and what the next, you know, what 2022 is going to look like, um, I, I'm really kind of hyper-focused on just getting us through the pandemic and kind of to a new normal or next normal or whatever you want to call it um, before we start trying to overhaul all of the things that we were considering before the pandemic even hit. So that's just my uh, my perspective on on that. Okay, and then Jim, if you could do one more line item for the outdoor dining parklet um, as an extra as a different line item, because those are all separate. Um, thank you, Council Member Council Member Kaiser. Uh, yeah, thank you. I think I'm confused. Is this time for questions or is this um, comment? Feel free if you have some questions or for for clarity. Um, no questions. I just have a lot of comments, so I can wait. Um, sure. If we're prepared to go item by item, if it's if, if it's about these, um, or if you'd like to expand on any of these, is that what you're thinking? I just wanna. Um. Well, I think kind of how obviously how uh, Vice Mayor Story was saying the 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 whole parklet situation along with the um, parking fee situation will and. And definitely go hand in hand. I agree that I feel like focusing more on the comeback of this pandemic is is sort of where I want to be, and that's more important to me than um, increasing the parking fees. Because if we do so, then that's going to increase the cost for the small business in order to keep a parklet as a more permanent option. Um, I want to look at the parklets as more of a sustainable and feasible thing rather than maybe sort of bouncing back on what you guys proposed a few years ago um, and actually looking at what could happen for the small businesses and what type of sales tax that would actually inevitably be bringing in along with the parking fees, maybe not necessarily looking at how to increase the parking within the village, but within the larger lots behind the police station and city hall. Those are quite affordable and I feel like those are areas where maybe we could increase the cost. Um, downtown Santa Cruz is a dollar an hour to park. Downtown Capitola is a dollar fifty, but our back lots are fifty cents an hour. So I think there's some wiggle room there that um, we could certainly look at as far as more revenue um, and really creating a a more feasible option for the small businesses to maintain their outdoor dining. Um, ones that haven't had the option before or before it was just too expensive. Um, I am a huge advocate for that, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you 
appreciate that feedback. No, it sounds like this is going to be a priority of yours then. So let me go ahead and go across the board while Jim finishes his edits. It's, I didn't know. It was, is it Parlex? Um, have I been saying it wrong this whole time? No? Okay. Um, item 17, review village hotel parking permits and village parking program as a standalone. I'll just go across. Council Member Peterson? Mm, no. Okay. Um, I will say no as well. Count Vice Mayor Story? As a standalone, no. Okay. Council Member Bertrand? No. Council Member Kaiser? Yes. Okay. And then, you, do you mean no? I mean no. Yeah. Uh, okay, item eight, uh, 18, review parklet, uh, parkettes in village outdoor dining current program and 331. <laughs> Council Member Peterson? Yes. Yes for me. Vice Mayor Story? Yes. Council yes. Member Bertrand, Council Member Kaiser, this is, this is you. Yes. Okay, I feel like we edited Vice Mayor's stories, so just for um, for for future context, Jim, there was a line item that both of them were combined for Vice Mayor's story, and I just want to make sure you leave it up there that it was the parklet and the parking together as one as a priority, and I just don't want to minimize that that was what he suggested earlier. Um, okay, and so we'll go across the board as you finish typing that up. So, Council Member Peterson. Wait, are we on the park, Litton Village, or are we going oh, to the I alcohol? The, okay, I'll let Jim finish that one. We'll go to the alcohol, and then we'll go back to Vice Mayor Stories. Um, work with SoCal to allow alcohol at the community center. Yeah, Mayor, <laughs> private comment. Oh, I'm sorry, Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I put that on last year, and you know, I think as you know, um, we haven't been able to uh, generate a lot of money out of the community center. Before, we used to be able to do alcohol, which allowed for weddings and a whole variety of other things. It, it is a fraught issue with the school district, but if we did support this, we now have better relations with the school district. We might be able to come to some agreement. So that's why I put that there, basically to help generate money to support the community center, so we get some improvements in there, HVAC and a bunch of other things. Okay. Um, if you recall, council member, as mayor, you get to sit in the with the superintendent, and I won't make this a priority of mine, but I would be more than happy to ask the question during the, that breakfast club meeting with the superintendent and the vice mayor. If, um, if I would be more than happy to do that, just to let you know. Yeah, no, that'd be great. This is a long-term discussion. It won't happen overnight. Okay, so we'll go across the board just for sake of continuity. Council Member Peterson? Yeah, I agree this is something we should look at at some point, but not this year. Okay, um, no for me. Vice Mayor Story? No. Council Member Bertrand? I'll say yes so that it keeps coming up in conversation, as you said, in the Breakfast Club. Okay, Council Member Kaiser? No for me. Okay, and then we'll go back to item 20, review parklet and village parking program together. Council Member Peterson? No. Um, no for me. Vice Mayor Story? Uh, yes. Council Member Bertrand? Yes, um, but I think the emphasis should be on going forward in the future years. But yes, anyway. Okay, Council Member Kaiser. How is this any different than the last one? Sorry, that we voted on for. The last one, we're not going to be doing parking permits. It would just be park lots. Okay. So would you like to do both or what or one? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think we should explore both. Okay, so that's a yes for Council Member Kaiser. I keep scrolling if I'm going through the Excel sheet with my, my mouse here. It's kind of funny. Um, thank you, Jim. Okay, so, I I'm sorry. Can, can you just as quick, can I have some clarification? So, so the village parking program as a whole got no votes to review, but we did get three Can't votes. 
and then everyone wants to look at the parklet, and then it looks like it's three to two to do parklet and village parking together. Yeah, that, you got the majority. Yeah, you got the majority on looking at them both together. Uh, so that's Vice Mayor Story's suggestion. You got the majority. Okay. Okay. One. So we're gonna. So it looks like the council. So that that's the direction is we'll sort of bundle a parklet and village parking permit program conversation um, for for, the, for for next year. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Okay, we lost the council member for a stretch. Um, I'm going to give Jim, Jim a second. We'll go ahead and break for two minutes, okay? Uh, we'll return in two. No, I'm sorry. We're just taking a two-minute break. I, they mentioned it. I didn't know if you had heard. They should be resuming shortly. Thank you. We need some quirky hold music. <laughs> That's a great idea. All right, folks. We're going to get started. We're almost there. Longest meeting of the year. We're only going to do this once. I appreciate everyone's hard work. Do we have everyone back? One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Okay, Jim, let's rock and roll here. Item 22, go above and beyond keeping residents informed, ensure all members made aware of projects that affect them. As a priority, as a budget priority, Council Member Peterson. Uh, you know, I, this is another one of the items that I feel like are important and they're always important. I just don't see how that's a budget priority in the next year. And I understand that staff time and outreach, et cetera, but, but I just don't see it as a budget priority for the coming year. So I'm going to say no. Okay. No, for me, 
Council uh, Vice Mayor Story. No. Council Member Bertrand. You're muted. He says yes. I think that was a thumbs up. Oh, here we are. Yeah, it's a yes. It, to me, it's an ongoing thing. It's okay, not a budget thing, though. Okay, Council Member Kaiser. Not on a priority. Okay, make available free feminine hygiene products for all public restrooms. Council Member Kaiser. I mean, Peterson, excuse me. Did we end up doing that? No. Yeah. We did? Well, I have no idea. <laughs> um, excuse me, not in the public. They're in City Hall and in the police station. Oh. Okay, oh. so we're thinking also like at uh, Jade Street and the beach and stuff. Okay. Um, then yeah, then yeah, I support that. Yes, for me. Vice Mayor Story? Yes. Yes. Council Kaiser? Super down. Number okay, great. Thank you. Um, 24, collaborate with local partners to update one local play structure to universal design for children of all abilities. Council Member Peterson. This is another one that I think is a really important, but I'm not sure that this year is the year that we would be focusing on, um, you know, putting putting funding towards a new play structure when we're barely getting ourselves off the ground with our budget. So I would like it to stay on the list um, for consideration in 2022, but I'm going to say no for this coming fiscal year. Okay, and I will say no to this one. Um, Council, it's fine. I can't see the names anymore, Jim. So it's Vice Mayor Story, right? Okay, I'll get it down. Vice Mayor Story? No. Council Member Bertrand? No, I agree with Kristen. Council Member Kaiser? No. Okay. Ex uh, I think that says expand emergency response planning and pursue grants for city hall generator. Did that happen? Yeah, we got a generator, didn't we? I don't know. We submitted a grant. We were unsuccessful. We submitted another grant, which is actually not for a generator system, but is for a PV and storage system. And I don't believe we've heard back on that grant. Okay, Council Member Peterson. Okay, in that case, uh, yeah, I think that would be a priority. It's, a generator is pretty important in case of emergency. I would say. Um, I, I would just tap that into the grant that we approved um, earlier on. So I'm going to say no to this in um, but because we have the other grant section on there. Um, in that case, can we, can we move this? Well, I guess it depends on what everyone else says, but if we can all agree, I think that's a really good point, Mayor Brooks, that maybe we should just move that back into the other grant item and, and not make it one of its own. Consolidate. Yeah. Can I just yeah, is, um, can I get a thumbs up if everyone just agrees with the consolidation and that staff will continue with their attempts to get a grant for a generator? I see everyone except council. We already all said yes to grants. Like our story. Well, I think we already have a grant out there. Right. Um, I, I think the need for city hall to have a generator um, is should not be dependent upon whether or not we get grants. Which, I mean, that's kind of saying if we never get a grant, we're never going to do it. Um, I think it should be a priority independent of whether we have a grant or not. How much do generators cost? I think they were like hundreds of thousands of dollars is what I recall. Yeah. Um, like about 300000 Yeah, we yeah. need a grant. <laughs> Okay, so let's leave it as a, Jim, I'm sorry, I see you cutting and pasting. Let's leave it as a separate line item and we'll go across the board one more time. Council Member Peterson. My apologies, we're back on the, which one? The generator now? Yeah, we're just going to leave it as separate. And um, experience for Jenny, Cindy Home Generator. Okay, then yeah, then yeah, I'll support it as its own thing, that's fine. As do I, Vice Mayor Story. Yes. Council Member Bertrand? Yes. Council Member Kaiser? Yes. Okay. Now we are on to have City Council create and set priorities for community grants. 
Council Member Peterson. Yes. Yes for me. Vice Mayor Story. Yes. Council Member Bertrand. Yes. Council Member Kaiser. Yes. Okay. I if everyone's in agreement, seek opportunities to help people stay connected during COVID nineteen. Um I feel like that we're doing that already. So unless someone feels otherwise, we can skip through that one. Consolidate maybe. <laughs> Okay. 27, established plan for children's fund, considering parks and rec strategic plan and something else. Uh, and needs for scholarship. Established plan for children, uh, children's fund, considering parks and rec strategic plan and needs for scholarship. So we completed the strategic plan. So I think that was complete. Line item 31. Staff develop a list of projects associated with the mall redevelopment. I think that has been complete or is ongoing. Um, and just stop me, folks, if you disagree or want to vet this out. Evaluate traffic flow at Cliff and Wharf possible roundabout. So this is a roundabout for Cliff and Wharf. Um, so that. Like past Shadowbrook, is that Cliff and Wharf, right? Like down there, that round and dead end. And it's right. like, a, I remember talking about that last year. Okay, so Council Member Peterson, would you like this to be? Uh, no, not for the coming year, no. Uh, neither do I, Vice Mayor Story? No. Council Member Bertrand? No. Council Member Kaiser? Okay, sidewalks on Kennedy and McGregor. So that uh, um, at the end of so New Brighton Middle School towards New Brighton Beach, there are no sidewalks as you walk towards New Brighton Beach, right? That's Kennedy and McGregor is what I'm thinking. It's a very extensive project as I recall the city manager telling us about last year. My recommendation is I think you can punt on these CIP projects and when we get in the budget we'll be talking about how much money we might have and at that point then you can make a determination unless you have specific projects that you'd like us to do more research about and then bring information at the budget time. Well then I'll prompt everyone and say this is a yes for me. Council Member Peterson. Um, I, I would say it's, uh, it, this is tough because I can't say that yes, make this a budget priority. I would say this is a priority for us to discuss in our actual budget discussions when we're looking at our CIP budget. So I, maybe. All right. I, I'll, I'll, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll take everyone off the hook on this one and can we, we save it for our actual budget hearing um, when we figure out how much money. Um, Rispin Park, the conceptual review was just completed, so I think we're just waiting to hear back from the grant on that. So I won't say it's completed, but we can move forward from that. Declares complete street project, that was a priority. I know there's CIP projects in place, so we'll discuss that during our budget hearing at the next one. Um, seek grant with school district regarding the soccer field. So this is staff, one of staff recommendations this evening. Council Member Peterson. Uh, seek grant. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's probably not quite seeking a grant yet. It's really figuring out if there's a partnership possibility. It's so then is it a budget priority or is it just something that is happening? I, mean, I think th this is actually would be a helpful one to get feedback in. If council thinks this is a good thing to work on, then I think we can focus on it. We have a breakfast club meeting, meeting with school districts that can talk about it. The council feels like this is kind of a bit of a hornet's nest um, because, you know, the Monterey Park area can sometimes, um, there's a lot of, there can be a lot of just community feedback and different perspectives. Um, then we could, we could focus our efforts somewhere else. Okay. Well, we can get community feedback and, and different input, I guess, in that case. Sure. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. And I guess I would just offer that I, I like the idea. I think it's great for us to look further into this. 
as a fin as financially putting any money into it, I, I wouldn't agree with any of that right now. Um, so if you want to, if, if the rest of everyone's okay with just adding that as a caveat that this is just to start the conversations and to look further into this opportunity, not necessarily funding it, then I am a yes for this. Um, Vice Mayor Story. Um, the partnership with the school district regarding the soccer field. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, we, we've had some discussions with them already about some initial steps in that direction. It seems to me it was about more than just the soccer field, though. Um, um, and um, so, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with continuing the discussions with the school district. Great, thank you. Okay, Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, no, I think this idea is going to, you know, come to fruition eventually. But we need to keep it going. We need the discussion going. And you know, like Jamie said, he wants us to sort of give him direction. To you know, he's talking with Scott, so you know, that's part of the whole scenario besides the Breakfast Club. Right, right. Council Member Kaiser. Yes, I think um, keep the conversation going for sure. Um, as far as a priority, it's probably not like top notch on my list. Okay. Councilmember so Bertrand? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was trying to raise my hand. Um, yeah, I wanted to put something in there um, just to get some cost estimates. So when we talk about CIP, and um, that would I, be. I was, I was going to go around. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. I know everyone has some other things to add. I just right. want to make sure we covered all of the staff ones that were presented in the packet, um, in our packet. Jamie, did we get all of those? It was a soccer, it was parklet, it was a few other things. And I just want to make sure we get to those first. The Scott Valley Partnership, that is, that's quite an interesting question about whether or not, um, whether or not that might be something we would consider pursuing. I think the advantages to our community and the city of doing that is, is we could spread out some of the fixed administrative costs. Um, if we entered a partnership with Scott Valley, um, potentially also does, you know, the one of the things I will often say is the magic isn't in the 5,000th can of trash that you pick up, it's in the first. So to some degree, <laughs> when we develop programs, if we if we have partnerships with Scotts Valley, we just have more experience. And, you know, it's like once you do one food truck event, the second one is easier. And so it's easy to kind of bring those experiences back and forth. The downside is, is that this would be, um, you know, we'd be relying on, on our recreation, um, our recreation um, manager to, to manage this. And, you know, there's only, we only have one Nikki Bryant. And so it would mean, um, you know, sharing some of those resources. So Scott Valley is interested in exploring this partnership. Um, they haven't committed to it by any stretch of the imagination. But, but the question is, is does the city, does the city council see a value in exploring that partnership? Okay. Council member Peterson, do you have a question? Oh, you're muted. I see value in it is, um, yeah, I'm interested in hearing if our, um, if Nikki feels that we have the uh, bandwidth to handle it. And if so, then I'm, I'm for it. Is Nikki on? Yes. Hello. Sorry. I, uh, good evening, mayor, council members. I, I'm catching up a little bit because I um, was popping in and out when this conversation started. So um, forgive me if I repeat anything. Yeah, we just started. We just, the question was if it's within the, your bandwidth to possibly partner with Scotts Valley and, with, and offer our services and programs with them. Um, yes, I, I think particularly um, in, in regards to a first phase, um, I do feel that it is within our bandwidth. Um, it is something that I would need to really deeply explore and come up with some strategies within for staffing as to how we would best manage it and identify what exactly we would need. Um, but 
I it it I feel like it is a, a reasonable challenge. I, it would it would be a challenge as of that. Anything that would be a starting of a new program would be. Um, however, I feel that particularly in this first phase, um, I am I am confident that we would be able to support Scott Sally with this contract. All right. I'm sorry, Councilmember Peterson. Did you have another question? No, I was just going to say thank you, and, and in that case, I would I would support this. And and I just want I see your hand raised, Councilmember Kaiser. I just want to uh, ask for some clarification for Nikki. You said um, that you would feel comfortable moving on with that contract. I know you and I have had discussions about what the the contract you're, you're speaking of, but can you please um, share with the rest of Council what contract you're, you're talking about? Um, so. I, I believe that it was mentioned at the beginning a little bit, and again, forgive me if I'm repeating um, details, but uh, in regards to Scott Valley's recreation um, division, they are they're looking to be able to provide um, summer programs for their community and have reached out to us um, in order to see if that's something that we would that that we would be interested in partnering for. And so in this in this first phase, we've been specifically talking about um, just providing a summer program and that if there's any other further conversation, we would have that discussion later. Thank you. Should we add an edit then to this partnership with Scotts Valley regarding recreation programs if for mm -hmm. the summer program or are we asking a more general question, Jamie, of um, a partnership for long term for the whole year? So my, you know, this is a, this is a good conversation, and and the conversation that I had with with city manager of Scotts Valley when it initially came up was that, um, I thought that Capitola potentially could get into a relationship and we could try to work on something maybe for this summer, uh, but really, the, the way I characterize it is is potentially it was sort of like putting the toe in the water for a potential longer term partnership. Like, if this is just, like, them looking for someone to come run summer camp this summer and that's it, like, I, I, I don't know that that's really that compelling for the city. If this is about kind of maybe starting to explore a longer-term partnership about recreation, not making the commitment now, I think that that is – that that could be more compelling for the city. So, at this point, I would keep it this way. And the first step in this would be let's take a look at a summer contract and see how that starts to work out. But but if nobody ever wants to do anything beyond that, then I think we would want to kind of reevaluate and say, does it really make sense to just us just do that? Does that make sense? Councilmember Kaiser, do you have a question? Thanks. Yeah, that was kind of where I was going with it was, is there a way to sort of explore this and almost like a more like a temporary way or like wherever so that Nikki can get her bearings and actually like either get staffing or an assistant or whatever she's going to need for that work. Um, I see in the future that it could be really cool. I, I, yeah, I think my approach would be like start small and then see where it goes and like if we're actually getting benefits from it um, and vice versa for them too, but obviously they would work with us, but yes, <laughs> thanks. Great. So I see yes for Council Member Peterson. I'll just share that I have some res reservations about a long-term partnership. I feel like our Parks and Rec Department has just completed their strategic plan. We're just kicking off with our own programming, possible expansion of our own programs. And although, Nikki, you know I think you're fantastic and more than able to, to expand, I have concerns about um, expanding too much before we really focus and um, focus on our families and our kiddos here locally. So um, I, I support the summer contract, and I'm guessing that will come to us as an individual item, um, but as a whole uh, annual uh, partnership with Scotts Valley for a whole year of partnership and services as our goal, um, I, I wouldn't commit to all that right now. So I hope I'm clear in that no is for this long term, but I do support the contract and see where it goes. So it's not one of my priorities. Um, Vice Mayor Story. Yes, at the discretion of the city manager. Councilmember Bertrand. Yes. 
Council Member Kaiser. Yes, to our short term goal, if that's kind of what we're going on. Okay, and then I, there was an administrative policies update as a recommendation for um, by staff. Council Member Peterson, would you like this to be one of your priorities that we reevaluate and update our administrative policies this year? I'm, I'm again. Is is this? Is there a budget ask behind this? It's staff time. I think that's why it was on there, right, yeah, Jamie? Council Council agenda time and staff time. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And that's a yes for me, Vice Mayor Story. Um, no, I don't think I have enough background about the need for this um, to um, come up. So I'll take a pass. Okay. Council Member Bertrand? Yeah, I, I totally agree with this. It's always good to review policies. Um, they often need to be updated. Uh, you shouldn't ignore the situations before and think they apply to now. So I definitely agree with this. Okay. And Council Member Kaiser? I agree. Great. All right. I think that covers the staff. Unless um, we're missing anything, Jamie, before before we move on to council members individual. Okay. So, council members Peterson, do you have a question, or do you want to? Yeah, I'm just wondering if we can. If I'm I'm still confused on the parklet one. I'm wondering if we can go back just so that I can clarify. I just, I'm not sure that I understand if, if one item gets unanimous and the other one just gets majority, but one of them includes what the other one was, I'm just, I'm not sure that I entirely understand. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if staff can clarify or if, I don't want to drag this on any longer than it already is. It's, we're, it's pretty late, but I'm just, I'm a little bit confused by, um, the parklets in the village alone getting a unanimous vote for it being addressed alone, but then the parklet and village parking getting a majority, which would also make it kind of what we focus on. So I'm kind of confused on which one of these we're going to focus on in the coming year. If I may take a stab at it, the way I read it is that both. So we're going to be reviewing the park, the park at let and parking program, that's how I see it, as a priority for this year. Well, then doesn't that negate the need for there to be the parklets in the village standalone? I think it was, um, we added that as a standalone item because uh, that's how Vice Mayor Story presented it. Presented it. He wasn't interested in, or excuse me, uh, he wanted them together because they go hand in hand. Okay. Are, if, are we comfortable with that, Jamie? Do you want to offer anything before I see hands raised from council? I, I, I do think, though, that, that having both of these doesn't make a ton of sense. We're either going to be doing parklets and parking programs together, as council member Story explained that they're, you know, that they're tied in together and we're going to have a comprehensive conversation about both of them together, or we're going to do line 18, which is just talk about the parklets and figure out what we want to do. Um, but I think it's, I, I, I sort of can't read them both and do both. <laughs> my, my thought was, um, if you don't mind, was to, um, after this meeting and before we get to any budget hearings, was to kind of clean it up and consolidate and put the priorities up to the top and the ones that we're going to punt out till next year or future years down at the bottom and bring it back during the budget hearing. So on, my, on these, I was going to combine them. Okay, and I'm more than happy if we'd like to just add to item 21 a recap, and if we want to do a a vote, a check through, again, just a check in to make sure everyone's on the same page, if that would uh, help, Councilmember Peterson. You mean at a future meeting? No, no, no. Like right now, like we could just say we can go over it because I I see your point that it. It's either we would be doing one or the other or both, right? 
uh, Council Member Bertrand. Please. Yeah, let me, um, you know, I think um, Council Member uh, Kaiser sort of said it best, and maybe she could reiterate, but the, the Parklet program, it would be, I think, as she said, so disruptive if we, you know, just sort of took it out right now. There's so much riding on it for the, the merchants. And I think Story is saying that, especially if we're going to make a permanent policy, we really have to look at how everything works together. So in the long term, this is the way I look at it, I agree with Sam's story, but I also agree with Council Member Kaiser that, you know, we, we can't wait for the whole thing to be analyzed and worked on before we make a decision. The Parklet program right now is so critical. Let's continue it since we have this deadline on the 31st of May until the coronavirus pandemic is over. And then during that period of time, we start working on moving forward with the overall program. Thanks. Yeah, um, uh, I think I need to clarify. Um, thank you, Jacques. Um, that's totally what I was going for is sort of creating a program for the parklets to be more accessible to the small business. Um, I do not personally think that we need to look at the meter rates within the village, but I, if we are looking for more revenue to bounce back from what we've missed out on from parklets, things like that, I think we need to revisit the meter program or sorry, the pay by space of the back lots behind the police station and city hall as a way to offset um, if, if the parklets are going to greatly impact um, our, our income and along with making it feasible for the small business. Um, so I don't know if that needs to be a separate line, like lots versus the, the village parking, but that's sort of what I was getting at when I voted for like the combo of the two, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Can I, if if it's um, if it's agreeable for for Council Member Story and others, can I make the recommendation that we make it a priority to review parklets in the village this year and afterwards, um, given time and bandwidth and based on where we are in a pandemic, then review. Uh, village parking and or parking lot parking. I'm not opposed to reviewing those things at another time in the year, but I don't want to review that. I don't want us to consider if we should keep parklets based on how we're going to handle parking revenue. So I, I, I don't have a problem with reviewing them separately, but I don't want them bundled together. So I'm, I'm wondering if there could be um, a compromise that we will review the parklets in the village and outdoor dining independently of and first before reviewing uh, village parking program and hotel parking and, and parking lot parking. Does that make sense? So maybe prioritize 18 is now and 19 is subsequent to now. Yes. And if it happens in this fiscal year, so be it, but it would, it would need to be sub subsequent to 18. Yeah. I, th I think the main point is that we have a COVID situation, our downtown and our merchants and all the businesses that are there depends on us meeting their needs at this point. And so that's a priority and not worry about the whole fiscal thing of the parking meters and stuff like that until we actually have the time. Okay, I think we have a consensus vice mayor's story. You know, I guess I just wanted to share, and for myself, I don't know how I would make a decision about parklets and granting them or denying them without knowing how much money it costs the city um, and whether there are ways for us to mitigate that expense. That's all I'm saying. And one way you look at it is looking at our parking revenue um, and I mean, it says the village parking, but I think that includes the the lot, lower and upper, the beach parking. And I think, I don't know, just in my mind, you can't do these things independently unless, I mean, because there's going to be a great demand for parking. That's just my anticipation. And all the ones on the Esplanade, um, um, the, one, um, the one on Capitola Avenue, uh, the ones on San Jose, 
and Jamie, you can correct me if I'm not remembering this correctly, but I think those those were significant amount of revenue that we lost, and we, it would be a permanent um, uh, reduction in our revenue. Now, I don't know that that's a bad thing um, uh, overall, but I don't know how you evaluate parklets without analyzing the word park. That's just my point of view, and so, and that's the way I would approach it. Um, and I'm, and regardless of what happens tonight, I'm still going to look at it in that fashion. Madam Mayor, could I address Sam Story's um, point? Sure, I just want to make sure before you do, Council Member, that we have the item listed correctly, Vice Mayor Story, at, um, correctly as you are stating it. And I think that's line item, I, I see post-COVID, I know you didn't say that, but um, line item 19, so review parklet and village parking program together was your item, correct? Um, well, if, if village is, if we all agree that it includes the um, lower and upper um, beach parking lots, um, and I'm not, yeah, program, I don't, you know, to me, yeah, so it's the parking meters. I, I don't know why, you know, the program, but, you know, it, it's just a lot of that semantic. Um, so, Jim, what I'm hearing is review parklet and parking and nothing else from Vice Mayor's story. Well, yeah, that would, that would be fine, and parking. Um, yeah. If you wanted to put parking rates. Um, so, just, I don't know if this helps at all, but um, when I'm, I'm referring to parking program, I'm, I'm thinking of the meters in the village, Cliff Drive, both uh, the Pack Cove lot, all of the different permits that we issue, surf and coffee, neighborhood permit, just, just taking a look at everything we do, which we charge for parking. Okay. So I think we, we hear Vice Mayor's story, um, and I'm hearing Council Member Peterson be pretty clear that now is not the time to review parking or parking increases at this time, but it's understandable that there will have to be some sort of analysis when we get into the parklet mm -hmm. that of the parking meters and the effects on that, and that's just going to come to a nat natural fruition when we re evaluate the parklet. So I, I um, but I also want to. Uh, I'm sorry, Mayor Brooks, to interrupt, but I also want to clarify that my my suggestion of reviewing the parklets in the village is not just related to COVID-19 response. That I think we should review them. Um, that, that this isn't just let's review them based on the fact that we're still in a pandemic, that I, I thought we should have a consideration of them um, in light of or in consideration of the fact that we're in a pandemic and going to be moving out of it, but not just do we want to keep them going during the pandemic. Yeah. Mine wasn't necessarily, and I apologize, I know this is getting kind of complicated. I just wanted to make sure that that was and it, I agree, I, that was neither what I was approving either. We're talking about long-term parklets that include funding and they have to look nice and could be possibly forever. Um, okay. So I'm going to review. We're going to start with line item 17, review village hotel parking permits and village parking program. So this is just if we're going to be reviewing the parking program the cost, if we would possibly increase it over time, et cetera, et cetera, and use staff time to look further into that, to our parking program. So the village parking, the lots, upper and lower lots, if this wants to be, we want to use staff time and make this a priority for this year. So that's line item 17, all parking programs, and there was nobody interested in that. Is, has anything changed? Okay. Now, it stays on the list. <laughs> then, uh, 
Council Member Kaiser, did you want to change your opinion on item seven, line 17? Sorry, yeah, and I, I do feel like uh, maybe I'm just like spinning the wheel. I, I'm not, maybe I'm not explaining or getting to the point correctly. If, if looking into the parklet program gets overlooked because we are losing revenue on parking, then I would like to look at the Pat Cove lots as, as gaining more money for us, not necessarily the village parking so that that doesn't affect the small businesses. So I don't, I don't know, like, sure. Like I think what Sam is saying, we're eventually it's all going to coincide and, I don't know if there's any getting away with not looking at one thing and looking at the other. And um, if it means compartmentalizing each space and like where we're looking at gaining revenue from, if that's what it takes, that's what I'm looking forward to, um, to make it sustainable for, for us and for the small business. Um, and maybe that's just in a grander scheme thing and that's totally fine, but um, I just, I think everything will have to be looked at. Okay, and I see that's why you voted yes for item nine, line 19. Because it's okay. Council Member Peterson. Yeah, I've got two things. One, and maybe it's a point of order. Has this gone to public comment yet? I can't remember. We did go to public comment okay. before we, we started going through this. Yeah. Okay. In that case, I think, um, and, and I understand that it's hard to, to separate these, these things when we're talking about budget priorities and where we want to spend our money, but because we're all kind of spinning our wheels here and it's getting late, I would make a motion that we approve our budget principles and goals except for line items 17 through 19 and that those come back to us as a separate agenda item for discussion on their own. I'll second that with the proviso that Jim gives us some sort of read out of how he sees it in terms of finance in general. Okay. All right, so we have a first and a second. I don't know if uh, Kristen uh, agreed with me. I, I think Jim has a large uh, role to play here in helping us understand. So that's right. what I was trying to inject. In a future, that's what I mean, in a future item. I think in a future item, it should come back to us as, as its own agenda item saying, here's the issue with the parklets. Uh, here's the issue with village parking. Here's the issue with lot parking. And we can decide at that time which one of those three items, if not all of them, we want to address. Okay, I totally agree with that. Yeah. We have a first and a second. Um, so I'm just checking with the map. Um, Madam, hold on, I just I just want us to finish this motion that's on the table, and I want to confirm with the Mantha that we can do a roll call for this item and then move forward with the rest of the budget principles. I, I have a matter of order because the Parklet program ends on the 31st. 21 what happens okay. if yeah so you know this item better come back before then so we have some uh, chance to move forward or we're going to have to continue the program that's my point yeah, if you want to answer now yes staff if, if working on the parklets and figuring out the future we will be working on that in the near term I mean that's going to be a big project for us to work on um, and so, yes, no, we won't just have everybody take the tables out and not have a plan or a process in place to, to consider the future. Okay. I just want to confirm that. I do want to support what uh, Kristen said as a second. So with that confirmation, I definitely support it. Madam Mayor, could you please repeat your question? Sure. Um, we had a, a sub or an additional motion to, to add an agenda item. So I had, um, there was a suggestion on the table to add an agenda item at this time to uh, the new item. And there was a first and a second. Do I just jump into roll call? It's a substitute motion in addition to what we have going on here. No, 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 that wasn't, that wasn't a substitute motion. That was part of my original motion. My original motion was to accept our budget principles and goals with the exception of items 17 through 19. Oh that they be removed from our budget principles discussion altogether and come back to us as its own agenda item. So I that's, see. that's just one motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So there's a oh, first and sorry. a second on the table. Before we go to roll call, 
Um, is there any other items or any other questions before we go to roll call? I do. I'd like to add some additional items to the budget principles. So um, before we do, I feel like we haven't, I did not get to add my items to the list. Um, but if I'm going to, at the sake of time and continuation, it sounds like there's a motion a second. Samantha, can, do I have to take it or do we, can I continue to add my items? You could make a substitute motion, um, or you could add your item and see if Councilmember Peterson would accept a friendly amendment. Okay, so Councilmember Peterson, I just have two things to add to this list to see if I would get council um, agreement on them. Would you be open to that substitute motion? I think the substitute motion would have to be the addition of the items that you are about to put forward. So, oh, since the motion, if I'm and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Sam, Samantha, but I believe that um, I have a motion in a second, so it's still open for discussion. So you could offer up for discussion additional items to this budget document, and then ask for an amendment to my motion to add those items into the approval that I've asked for. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Okay, so I um, and I don't want to skip over anybody else. I don't think that's fair. Usually the mayor speaks last. So um, there's still a council comment. Are there any other council members who wanted to add things to the budget principles and goals? I see Vice Mayor Story hand raised. I did too. And Council Member Bertrand, and as do I. So Vice Mayor Story, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, maybe direct our attention to one other uh, CIP project, and it could maybe be rolled into when those come back to us. But um, lately, um, I've heard a lot of comments from residents about the speeding on Park Avenue. Oh, God. And um, you too? Um, I've been walking the street just to check it out. It's bad. Um, well, and. And I don't know, I mean, in terms of budget, you know, the three E's of traffic calming, uh, enforcement, engineering, and education, um, I would like, I think we should set this as a budget goal so it's, um, you know, uh, on our, uh, uh, in our minds, on our focus, attention uh, to try to stop the speeding on Park Avenue. Um, it's not all money, but I think that with a, you know, combination of strategies, we can maybe uh, um, try to slow things down. So that's that's my item. Okay. Did you have any others to add, Vice oh, Mayor? No, that that's the only one. Okay, Vice uh, Council Member Bertrand, what would you like to add to the list? I have two items, and you know, I would refer these to Steve because I'd like to know eventually how they um, jumble into uh, CIP. Item one is the um, the little eucalyptus grove at Kennedy and Park. Um, the pathway through there is, I think, a hazard, and it needs to be relooked at. Uh, it's asphalt that's breaking up, and a lot of people are using it right now. They can trip and fall, and then the stairway at the end at the Kennedy and Park. Uh, needs to be looked at, but I, I'd look to see to give some recommendations on that. So that's one item. Uh, the other item is um, Monterey Park gets a lot of use right now, especially with um, a recreation director managing the um, reservations and stuff. So I'd like to propose um, some, um, what do you call it, tables there, you know, uh, picnic table type things so that the, the people that use the park could also enjoy sitting down and maybe, you know, what a picnic table is for. But people come by themselves also. So if you notice the picnic tables in Noble Gulch Park, uh, they're getting a lot of use right now. Um, but, you know, something at Monterey Park would get a lot more use. So that's the other idea. Great. Council Member Kaiser, did you have anything to add to the list of priorities this evening? 
Um, I think you may even touch on it, but I think we had spoken about it last meeting, but um, signage is kind of something that we could revisit, um, whether it's from the parking lot or even as you're entering the village, um, and could possibly incorporate um, some of the small businesses um, I'm gonna. I'll try and work with Kristen to reach out to the BIA and see um, what their um, involvement might want to be. If there's like some sort of funding that goes into that through them as well, um, that might work. Um, but I think just making the village more visitor friendly might be might be a good thing with the sign. Thanks. Great. And then I'd like to add. Um, Council already agreed for implicit bias training for ourselves as council, but I also like for city staff to um, to have the opportunity to participate in implicit bias training as well. Um, so, and that that uh, takes some funding there, as well as um, for us to prioritize the review of affordable housing opportunities in relation to the Capitola Mall and looking at potential community partners. So this will take staff time um, to, and efforts. And so because of that, I would put it on here as a priority. Um, and building relationships, Jim, is what I, or seeking relationships, community, or relationships. Okay, so those are them. I think the CIP projects will be brought forward to the next one to see if they're fiscally possible. Right. And then, so that's item 40, 41, 42. So we'll start with item 43 and move on. I see your hands are raised, Vice Mayor Story and Vice uh, Council Member Bertrand. Um, okay. So we'll just come finish up with item 43 and on for Council. Council Member Peterson for the, I'm sorry, um, Mon 42, Monterey Park picnic tables. Do you like that to be a priority? Yeah, you can just put my agreement for all of the items from 42 through 45. Okay. Um, that makes it simple for me too. Uh, yes to all of those. Vice Mayor Story 42. for the Monterey Park picnic tables. Would you like that to be a priority? Um, well, I have, I have residents requested it. I, uh, if, if we have resident demand for a picnic table, sure. Um, it seems like a very, you know, uh, pretty easy item to accomplish. Um, you want me to go on? Okay. Not there. Sure. You're comfortable with just finishing on oh, 43. Yeah. Um, and, uh, let me ask the signage. Wouldn't that be part of CIP? You talking about street signage? No, Lower Pack Cove signage signs to the beach. There's uh, some in Upper Pack Cove, but it's just going to take some funding. But I don't know. Is that a CIP project, Jamie? No. Signage, so, as long as we've got code, we, we can take care of it at a staff level. Oh, uh, perfect. Like so, it. guess what? Yeah, yeah, that's, guess what? that's fine then. That's what, um, yeah, Kaiser, uh, Council Member Kaiser, it's going to happen. So, the next one, implicit bias training for staff. We already agreed on Council, Jim, so it would be just staff. Yeah, I'd say on that, if there was, um, you know, volunteer. Um, I would agree with it, um, and uh, prioritize affordable housing. Yes. Right. And then Council Member Bertrand, item 42. Yeah, Is just a little, little <laughs> I'll, I'll go all the way down the ground, uh, just like Kristen did, but a little background on Monterey Park uh, picnic tables. Um, I organized a meeting. This is ancient history around the issue of a a skateboard park and uh, one of the things that we thought of at that time was having picnic tables so that the people could watch their kids uh, skate and stuff like that um, 
people in general at that meeting liked the idea of picnic tables and that was all composed of neighbors up and down Monterey Avenue. I don't know if they feel the same right now, but at that time they were all for the idea because they used the park. And, okay. Yeah. And so, then we'll skip item 43. What about 44 for training? Well, I'm agreeing to all of them. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Council Member Kaiser? I'm going to mirror um, Vice Mayor Story's responses. Thank you. All right. So we have a first and a second. I'd like to offer a substitute motion for Council Member Peterson if, if you would accept the updated budget principles and goals to your motion. So is that an amendment to my motion? It'd be a friendly amendment. Friendly amendment, council member. Yes, I will I will accept that friendly amendment. Are we sure we don't want to uh, make it a budget principle to find ways to make our meetings longer? Because I think we could do it, guys, if we really wanted to. So. Hey, 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 hey. I agree with the friendly amendment. Okay, we have, our, we have our amendment. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Council member Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Kaiser. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Um, I'm going to vote no because I don't understand the reason for removing the park and park conversation as a goal, but then agendizing it as a separate council item. Um, so, no. Aye. Okay, so that item passes for one. We are not done yet, folks. We're moving on to item 9C. That, Jamie, you look like you have something to say. Yeah, just really quickly as a process check, I, I think I would recommend um, that we adjust item D on the agenda and either just continue it entirely to next meeting Alternatively, we could do an abridged version and just get the resolutions approved and then continue the overall CDB conversation until the 11th. Uh, I can go either way, but I think we could get, we could cover item D if we do an abridged version and just a, maybe two or three minute staff presentation, uh, or we could just continue the whole item for two weeks. Are you talking about 9D or 9C? 9D. Okay, can we get through 9C first? I don't know if we should just, if that's just going to be a, are you suggesting we skip that one? No, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make things more difficult. I just know we have somebody on the call who, if we're not going to yeah. do larger CDBG conversation at, at 11 o'clock at night, um, I'd like to be able to get them off the call. That's all. Okay, I think we can move through this quickly. I think it's it, it's possible and we can be done in less than 15, we'll be done by 10 o'clock. Let's shoot for that folks um, as our goal to be done. So we'll, we'll see where we are with 9C. So we're going to move on to 9C. The pressure is on. Mr. Jesberg, this item's yours. Going as fast as I can to get my screen shared. Hope you can see my report. This is a our, one of our ongoing reports on the library project. In this report, we are also approving change order number 12. Uh, current status, uh, as you, I'm sure you've all seen driving by it, the building is progressing quite rapidly right now. The exterior finishes of the building itself are about 95% complete. Interior finishes are being installed rapidly. That includes ceilings, building cabinets, lighting, wall finishes, um, actually some carpeting's gone in. Upcoming, we have book stack installation, more carpeting, signage, and finally some landscaping that will occur in site finishing. So, um, you know, next uh, six weeks, we hope to uh, reach substantial completion on the project. Um, quick history on the change orders. 10 contract change orders have been previously approved for the City Council of Policy. Uh, since we last updated you on this, we did approve change order 11, 
which was done at a staff level uh, based on that policy is for $22,367 for several items of unanticipated work, um, mainly had to do with some materials that we had to deal with, changes in, in just design that were decided were worth going forward and re related issues like that. They had nothing to do with the power line conflict. Change order 12, which is before you tonight, um, I'll be honest, one of the more painful change orders I've had to write, completely related to power line issues um, for $582,402. Um, most of that, I'd say two thirds of that is compensable delays that the contractor is due um, due to the delays caused by the problems with the plans. Um, they, but the change order does include changes in how they constructed the roof framing, additional temporary bracing they needed to put in, temporary removing, temporary roofing we put in to make it through the winters um, without putting in the formal roof, and then we had to remove that. Temporary stormwater plan modifications that needed to be made because we went through another winter and then scaffolding extra costs. Basically, we put up scaffolding fields as much as we could, took that scaffolding down because we couldn't leave it up. We were paying a rent on it, and so then they had to come back and re-scaffold it. Um, looking at the current financial summary of the project, with so the project budget, which is fifteen million eight hundred and three thousand nine hundred ninety-seven dollars, that's available funding. That's in the staff report. The actual approved budget is fifteen million one hundred fifty thousand dollars. We do have additional revenue of about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars that has come to the project, and um, we're counting that as available funding is dedicated for this project. It really it, it couldn't go anywhere else. Um, the current project expenses, including change order 12, are 14 million nine hundred sixty-four thousand, leaving us a balance of uh, about $839,000. Uh, we do anticipate another $300,000 in change orders that have not been approved, leaving us close to a $500,000 projected fund balance at project closeout. So I wanted to just fly through some pictures. I'll go really quick here. Things that these were taken, I think, yesterday, so they're very fresh. This is the library sign. You can't see it because of the fence around the property that's at the corner of Wharf and Clares. So it'd be behind this fence right here. And anyway, there's the building with the scaffolding down, looking for more from Claris. This is coming, looking the other way. This is the entrance. This is the, uh, just the other side of the building. <clears throat> I like this picture. I actually haven't been on site because of COVID for a couple of weeks and this deck has gone in. This is the deck behind the children's room, which is right here, uh, that will have uh, places to read and it connects to the top lot there. This is the interior of the main room in the library. You can see the lighting that's going in. This is the finished roof material that is going on. Um, it makes it look like the underside of a ship. This wall will get some soundproofing and other paneling on it. So you can see definitely work under progress, but we're making forward. So this is an exciting picture of the children's room. This is actually carpeting that has gone in in this room. Um, and it's all, all of this is tying with the leaf motif of trying to bring the leaves from the park outside. So we have leaves on the carpet here, which finally fade away into this marbled carpet. We have a reading nook here. Um, kids are able to sit in these little cutouts here, read and have the leaf structure. And then we have the, the public art that's part of this is uh, hanging leaves from the ceiling. So that's quite a, a dynamic room. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So our recommended actions tonight is to receive the report and approve contract change order 12 with auto construction for the Capitol Branch Library in an amount of $582,402. And I am available for questions. So much. And we're going to move to council questions. I see council member Bertrand. Henry. Yeah, Mayor, is it appropriate? I have a question about the oak tree that's next to the uh, porch that's being built. You know, I, because this is just for the approval of the change order, perhaps you could ask staff offline about that. If that's okay. The right okay. Thank you so much. Um, any other questions? Okay. Any uh, questions of the public at this time? Okay. We'll bring. Uh, Mayor, I do not see anyone uh, with 
requesting any comments on this item, Mayor Brooks. Thank you so much, Larry. Okay, we'll bring this back for council deliberation and a vote. Do I have a motion? So we'll move. Do I have a second? I thought I saw, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I saw Margo's mouth move to say second, but I didn't hear it, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> I did both things, but. <laughs> okay, we have a second from Council Member Kaiser. Can I have a roll call, please? Council Member Bertrand. I approve. Council Member Kaiser. Aye. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. Thank you so much, Steve. I know it's been a long night. I love that library sign. My daughter saw it and just freaked out. I'm so excited. Okay. okay. Thank you for your support. Yes. Thanks. Item 9D, I wanted to say thank you very much to our presenter who waited all night to address council. Um, so we're on item 9D, adopt a resolution approving a community development block grant coronavirus number two application. Let's do it. All right. Can you see my slides? Yes, Kitty. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Are you awake? Good, ev <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm going to quickly go over the recent direction we got, and tonight I'll be asking you to adopt a resolution. Following that, we've got an update from Paul Ashby who is our CDBG grant administrator. He's worked uh, for the city for years administrating CDBG grants for the city as well as home grants. So quick overview, um, as you know, the CARES Act passed in March of 2020. We went through the first round of CARES Act funding. We're now entering into the second. In the second round, there's $320,261 available for Capitola. Um, two requirements are that first there's a public hearing um, for the public to comment on the, the money and funding, and that occurred on January 28th. Second, we need to adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to submit the application and administer the grant, and that is uh, what I'll be asking you to adopt this evening. The funds can be used in response to the COVID-19 pandemic for preparation, prevention, response, and recovery of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there are four types of activities under CDBG. First is public services, second public facilities, third housing for the homeless and economic development. Um, during my last update, I let you know that there's 16 plus million dollars in rental assistance that's going to go through the Treasury Rental Assistance Program. It will be administered by the state, so it's really exciting and it'll be available countywide. Our uh, local residents will be able to apply for that funding. Um, and during our first round of CDBG money, we put a lot of money towards food distribution. And the discussion was that in the next round, uh, the city council was interested in utilizing money for economic development and grants. Um, so here's the first round of funding that was approved by the city council. We are still waiting for the agreement from the state. We got preliminary approval, but the funding has not come in yet. We're hoping to receive that in the next couple weeks or at least in the next month. Um, for round two, um, as I stated, there's $320,000 available in funds. In this next round, because we did three activities in the first round, we're limited to one new activity and we can fund up to three previous activities. When we met on January 28th, the City Council directed staff to put $45,000 towards previous activities. So that's $15,000 to each um, activity for gray bears, second harvest, and community bridges. They're very grateful they get that news. And the also council um, asked that the remainder of the money be utilized for, to cover administrative costs of administrating these grants, um, and uh, the rest put towards economic development, in which um, the direction was for grants up to $7,500 to cover rent and utilities. We're waiting from the state to bring out more guidance on exactly how we can uh, guidance on those grants. So we haven't gotten that yet. Once we do, we'll be meeting with our ad hoc committee, uh, Paul Ashby 
and I, Larry and I, and um, to set up the guidelines for the new grant program. Um, we will be working with a partnership with SBDC, the Small Business Development Center uh, out of Cabrillo College, who has uh, so generously offered to run this grant for free for us so that it, it granted it um, supported an extra seven businesses. Um, so once we've set up the guidelines, with um, then we will submit the application to HCD. So tonight, um, the one action I'm asking for the council to take is to adopt the two resolutions which would authorize the city manager to submit community CDBG CV uh, applications requesting up to $330,261 of CDBG CV round two and three grant funds for the COVID-19 relief programs and to execute the grant agreement upon reward. And then next I'd like to introduce Paul Ashby, who it's been a pleasure working with and as I've said, he's uh, helped the city with home grants in the past and CDBG grants. And as we're going through this uh, process of um, getting more money for the, through the CARES Act, um, all of our neighbors have been asking, you know, how are you guys getting such great help and who's helping you out? So he's in high demand and we're really lucky to have him. So Paul, with that, I'll let you take over the screen share the sh okay. and you can jump into your presentation. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, Katie, and good to see everybody, uh, mayor, members of the council, uh, city manager. Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you. Okay. I'm going to share screen here and see if we can get this going here. Can you see that screen? It's loading. There it is. Okay. So as Katie mentioned, we are going to briefly discuss the uh, CDBG world, the Community Development Block Grant Program for the general cycle. Um, we've spent a lot of time on the CARES program, um, which runs through CDBG, but every year they also have a uh, notice, of funding notice of Funding Availability, a NOPA, uh, every year for <clears throat> an allocation of funds that they come out with that folks get to compete with. So I am going to give you a brief overview of that program and then take any questions that you all might have on it. So just quickly here on the CDBG program, just to give members of the council just a brief overview if you're not familiar. Um, this was established back in 1974 through the Housing uh, Community Development Act. Um, it's a federal program that runs down through the state. Um, the purpose of it is to provide decent housing, suitable living environment, and expanding economic opportunities for folks that are low to moderate income. Low to moderate income in CDBG world is 80% or below the county median income. So that's always our focus with these funds. Uh, and then you have two programs under CDBG, entitlement versus non-entitlement. Uh, and just to let everybody know that it's not aware, you're in the non-entitlement community, um, along with, oh, 150 odd other cities, counties in the state that, that compete for these funds. And if you're in the entitlement community, HUD gives you a direct allocation every year. So that's why we're talking about this NOPA, uh, to see if there's any, uh, desire by the council to pursue some of these funds. So again, just to reiterate, you are a non-entitlement community, so you'll be competing for these funds if you choose to do so. Um, on January 29th, HCD, Housing and Community Development Department, uh, released their NOVA for $30 million. Um, <clears throat> the amount of funds, you know, seems to keep shrinking each year. Obviously, it depends on the administration that's in office. Um, but again, that number is $30 million, and that's statewide, just to remind folks. Um, uh, on this call. Um, <clears throat> funding can be used for a wide range of things with CDBG. It, it's one of the most multifaceted grant programs, which is why a lot of folks like it. Um, housing, public services, economic development, infrastructure, um, and more. I'll, I'll go into each of those just a little bit here in a moment. Um, and again, I just want to reiterate that, that a national objective always has to be met with CDBG. I list all three there. 
um, benefiting low mod income persons, aid in prevention of slums and blight, and meet an urgent need. 95% uh, of the time, maybe more, that that's going to be a benefit to low moderate income persons. It's going to be the national objective that, that we focus on. So in this round of funding, uh, jurisdictions are eligible to submit <clears throat> an application for up to three activities. Um, I've tried to lay out each of the each one there that you can do, and I'll, I'll try to hit on some specifics on it um, and some things to keep in mind. Um, so the maximum number there you see is 1.5 million dollars, and we have applications due on April 30th, which is uh, about two months away. So it'll happen fast. Um, <clears throat> I go into each one of these on the next slide, so so I, I can go back to this when there's a discussion, just so folks have these numbers uh, in their mind. Uh, um, quickly here, I'll hit on home buyer assistance program. So this is gap financing, which is you know basically a silent second loan uh, where payments are deferred for borrowers. This is something you can apply for. The borrower still needs to qualify for a primary mortgage, um, and the city comes in in the back in the back end of that loan and funds it so that they're actually able to purchase that house. Um, for those of you that are aware, the city previously implemented this program with CDBJ money. It was a 14 contract um, from the years 2015 through 2017 in partnership with the local housing authority. <clears throat> housing rehabilitation program is another activity that's eligible this round. Um, similar to a, to a home buyer loan program, uh, it's, a, it's another silent second, so payments on it can be deferred, and it's aimed at uh, homeowners in the city that are trying to rehabilitate uh, their homes and bring them up to code, alleviate safety, health concerns, weatherization improvements. Um, I, I do always point out to folks that these programs are extremely uh, administrative heavy to implement. Uh, um, it, it's better to work with, a, with an organization that, that does this or has experience in it. Uh, you did run this type of program again back in 2015, 17 um, with that same CDG grant, and again that was with the housing authority as well. <clears throat> Public services. Um, this is another big one here that that CDBG does a lot of funding for, um, and, and, and folks compete for. So the the CV, the CARES money that Katie just went over when we talk about. Uh, you know, gray bears and community bridges. That's what those organizations fall under is the public services. So this is to pay for labor supplies material uh, for any type of eligible public service. And there is a huge list that you can do, and I only did a handful here. Um, homeless services, recreational services, like a youth scholarship program, health services, meals on wheels, food distribution, um, crime prevention, we see youth programs aimed at, you know, gang prevention, et cetera. So <clears throat> there's a really lengthy list um, on public services. Planning and technical assistance, uh, they do allow for us, they, they only allocate a small portion of funds for this, but uh, this is really aimed at folks that are looking to get studies done um, that, that ideally will lead to a feasible project or a program. Um, the maximum on these is $250,000. I've listed some examples there. We, we've seen folks use them for master plans, um, CIPs, um, you know, updating your transportation, bike head plan, things like that. Um, and again, the idea is that they, they end up coming to fruition to a project. Um, it's the idea there with the CDBG. <clears throat> and then lastly, an eligible activity is economic development. Uh, this is what, again, Katie was just describing with the CARES Act um, that's proposed in, in, in your resolution tonight, uh, which is a business assistance program. So, again, this is aimed at providing working uh, capital to businesses, either in the forms of loans or grants, uh, and the idea is that you're assisting these individuals so that they can uh, retain or create low-moderate income jobs. Um, Eligible uses there, I listed payroll, rent, utility, equipment, a real wide range of things that you can use them for. Um, and again, you are going to be utilizing your CDBG CV money uh, for that type of a program. Non-eligible activities, just I wanted to put these out there for folks. Um, 
we cannot do any, you know, improvements to general conduct of government type of building, uh, no political activities, um, income payments, and construction of new housing. Uh, you can do all sorts of different housing. You can do rehab, home buyer. You can do multifamily acquisition and rehab, but you cannot do uh, new housing with CDBG dollars. So tonight we wanted to give you an overview um, so that I could just bring this back in front of council. I think it's been a, a few years at least um, since council and staff has, uh, you know, at least decided on possibly pursuing these funds and it sounds like this might be of interest tonight. Um, so we want to, you know, answer any questions, vet some activities that may come up. Um, we would need to come back and hold another public hearing. CDBG is very big on that. We have to do citizen participation. So we would do another public hearing at another date and, and bring back an application and a resolution, um, most likely in April before that deadline um, of April 30th. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back a slide before I get to questions and I will turn it back, back to Katie um, here. And I'm going to leave this screen up. Um, just so that it gives you the the activities and the dollar amounts that we're looking at um one item just that i'd like to hit on for public services because i think we'll probably discuss that a little bit tonight it's up to five hundred thousand dollars um you could do your three activities can go towards public services so you feasibly you could do three activities for up to five hundred thousand dollars total it would not be five hundred dollars five hundred thousand per public service activity. I just want to reiterate that. So um, more along the lines of 200,000, 200,000, 100,000 would be a split that you could do um, for a public service. So I will leave that screen up if that helps folks. And um, Katie, I, I can turn it back to you or mayor, members of the council, if you have any questions, um, I'm, I'm happy to answer um, anything that you might have. Katie, you're muted. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, I do want to take a moment. Just um, I, I have taken the time to look through our uh, grants that we do have uh, that we previously funded and were unable to fund this past year. And um, if the if the city council were inclined to move towards uh, funding going through with another CDBG project. At this time, I think it's something that we could definitely administer, and it would um, would be to administer public services up to the half a million dollars. I think that is within our bandwidth. I just want to reiterate when uh, Paul talked about the home buyer assistance, it was really finding a needle in the haystack when we, we found um, one qualified buyer last time we provided that service. And housing rehabilitation was tough, and uh, we know the uh, put a lot of administrative burden on our housing authority, and they would not be able to carry that out for us. So, I think if if we'd like to do housing rehabilitation, I would suggest that we look at that um, as a future program, possibly once uh, the coronavirus efforts are behind us, and we've administered the CV grants, and then uh, but public services uh, with a half a million dollars that could take a load off of your total your um, it, it could provide some great money for some great establishments in our area so. thank you it's very exciting so I'm gonna um, go to council for questions and I think vice mayor stories have raised Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Paul, for that overview of CDBG. What, I, what, my question was, um, I believe I heard you say that there, we would need to have a public hearing to take community input um, prior to the applications being submitted. Uh, but on tonight's recommended action is to approve the resolutions that already um, specify the recipients and the amounts. So um, could you reconcile that for me? How why would we do that before holding the public hearing? Absolutely, council member. Um, so the resolution and public hearing that you have, in, we, we've combined two items uh, um, is what's happened. So the, the resolution that you're approving tonight is for your CDBG CV money, your CARES money. 
and this is their general NOFA. It's a completely different pot of money that we're dealing with. So separate application, separate pot of money, separate resolution, everything would come back to council at a later date. Thank you. Yep. Councilmember Peterson. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm, I think on um, one of the pages it says we were going to get 330000 in funding, and the other one said three twenty. and I just wanted to make sure that I have it right in my notes. I'm sure it was just like a typo on, on one page or the other, um, but I was wondering if you could confirm if it's three twenty or three thirty. I think it's three twenty. Um, I think page three twenty three hundred twenty thousand two hundred sixty one. Perfect. Thank you so much. I see no other questions. Paul, I have a question for you. Um, you mentioned economic development as a possible opportunity for CDBG grant dollars. Um, Katie, you touched on that it is within our city's bandwidth. Should we be granted the 500K for public service? However, if we were to apply for the 500K for the economic development, would we have to do something similar to what we're doing now with the CDBG CB dollars and outsource that again? Did that all make sense? <laughs> yes, I believe I believe so. And 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 Katie, I'll jump in, um, Mayor. Yes, I would re recommend the same thing. You would want to partner with somebody um, like that we have for the CV funds to actually implement that. Um, the CV funds, we're trying to focus those more on one-time grants to try to assist as many folks as possible. Um, to be honest with you, most of the economic development programs that you typically see folks run is much higher limits and much more, I would say there's a focus more on loans and working capital when you do a business assistance program typically through CDBG. Um, so folks, uh, you know, the state's guidelines used to say things like you should be providing, you know, up to $100,000 to some of these people. So it's really a lot of working capital compared to what we're describing in the CDB grant. Okay, so, so the same question is, Katie, have we looked at any possible CIP projects that we would take on should we uh, attempt the other, uh, so there was the public service, there was economic development, and then there's one that you could do for a CIP project. Have you looked into that at all? As So um, Paul explained to me on a previous call that the CIP projects they had so many come in during the last round that they actually have an ongoing list. So there's very low probability that we would be awarded a CIP project because they're continuing to work off the list from the prior year. But, okay. And, and, okay. If, and if I may, Mayor, I'll add one thing there. Um, on the uh, when I mentioned CIP tonight, that was directly in reference to doing a planning planning document only for a CIP, not necessarily a project. And what gotcha. Katie mentioned is correct. Every year, typically, they allow for you to come in for infrastructure. And last year, they did an over-the-counter process, and it got it was completely oversubscribed. So um, they are funding down on that list with the money they, they have available this round. So they're not really taking any more applications for infrastructure, per se. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, so I see no other questions. Anybody from the audience who has any questions or comments at this time for item 90? Mayor Brooks, I do not see anyone wishing to comment on this item. Okay, so I'll bring it back to council comment and deliberation. Um, so we have the recommended action is to adopt the two proposed resolutions authorizing the city manager to submit the CDBG CV application um, for round two and three related relief programs and to ex execute the grant agreement upon um, award. And then we are also seeking council um, recommendation on whether or not to move forward with the additional grant opportunities as presented by Paul Ashby. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. 
So any comments or questions at this, or comments from council? Okay, do we have a motion on the table to adopt item 9D? So moved. I'll second. Okay, we have a first from Council Member Peterson and a second from Council Member Kaiser. <laughs> I, I saw you were muted, Council Member Bertrand. Um, can I have a roll call, please? Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Kaiser. Aye. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. And then if we can offer, do you need additional recommendation from council um, on the next steps. Should we take that as a motion? Samantha, would you agree with that as a secondary motion or do you just want a consensus from council tonight? You don't need to make a motion. You can just give directions to staff. Okay, so I'll take the liberty to give direction at this time because I promised we'd be done at 10 o'clock. It's 1020. So um, if I can get nods from council that we would like staff to move forward with the CDBG grant um, for the NOFA and bring it back to council for the uh, prior to the April 30th deadline. Is that all you guys need from us? Okay, I see consensus. All right, Paul, I appreciate your time. We've been asking for, I've been asking for this for a long time and I'm very excited to hear all the opportunities out there. So thank you very much for staying on tonight. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council members. You all have a wonderful evening. Yeah, thank you, Paul, for your patience. Appreciate it. Sure. All right, we'll move on to item 10. Council, fantastic job, hard work, so many hours. Thank you to staff. Thank you to our participants for being here tonight. Please remember to find the good in others and yourself. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Goodbye.